She did not like the finger. Look at her eye. Look at her this, eye. Anything that can be done to empower the FBI, That's the DOJ, true. or the CIA. I'm sorry, as it's not long true. As there. Oh, oh, she did not like the finger. She did not like the finger at all. Debate is Brianna. Oh, oh my God. It's public. Oh my goodness. And it's. Is Brianna a fascist enabler? Damn! Oh my God, Vosh is, Vosh is spicy. He's coming out of the gate. He's coming out of the gate. Well, let the beginning clip play again. I already watched the beginning clip on, on Twitter, but watch the let the the beginning clip play so you guys can kind of know the mentality of how Vosh talked about Brianna Joy Gray before. I've already given my opinion on Brianna Joy Gray. I think her uh, her uh, commentary on Ukraine is shallow and, and very wrong. Uh, and I think that we should be deeply engaged with the Democratic Party uh, because that's the only way you can change it. And also, lastly, I think her forced to vote commentary was completely off base. And I still believe it's completely off base. So you know where I'm coming from here. Anyway, let's watch. Vote fans and Brianna Joy Gray fans are fucking subhuman pieces of shit who are despicable people who are only in it for the aesthetic and for Ooh. the grift. Dipshit retards like Brianna here. Ooh. There are very few people on the quote left who I have less respect for than Brianna Joy Gray. What a piece of shit. I do hate her. We're never gonna have her on this show. Brianna Joy Gray is a oh truly reprehensible gosh. person. They are spineless, Ooh. grifting, Ooh. weasley, worthless Daddy. little pieces of Daddy. Daddy. idiot. Wow. I have no respect for Brianna Joy Gray. Daddy. This is what we call all, uh, a Joy Gray moment right here. No matter what she personally believes, she covers for fascists. She's right. representative of the rot in the online left. Unworthy of the platforms the that they way, stumbled wait, into. Wait, 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 let's go back, let's go back. This was very funny, okay? This was very funny. Very odd seeing alerts like this every day, but the analytics reporting only 250 new followers last month. Yes, lol, make fun of me. Treat it as a joke. I don't care. This is happening. That was funny. Okay, it was. It is funny when people say, "I why am I not getting enough fall?" It is funny because it just looks like you're crying about being unpopular. And I'm and I'm not even. And she's more popular than me, to be clear. But it just looks like that. And so you shouldn't ever tweet that of the rot in the online left. Unworthy of the platforms that they stumbled into through the charity of people smarter than them. For a genuinely unhinged person, she'll never have me on. You'll never have me on, will you, Brianna? You know that wouldn't go well for you. I'm excited to be joined today on Bad Faith Podcast for the first time by prolific uh, Twitch streamer turned YouTube streamer. Vosh, welcome to the program. Hello, what a pleasure to be here. Hope you're doing well this fine morning. I, I am doing well. Look, so the reason I wanted to talk to you today is because uh, I had the pleasure of meeting you for the first time on Rising last week. Uh, you know, you were brought on, the producers reached out to you to come and talk about some of the uh, discourse that's been going around. Yeah, I, I haven't seen him on the Rising thing yet. I haven't seen him on that. I don't know if I need to watch that or if it's really good, but dude, this is gonna be great. About Andrew Tate and this, is gonna be great. this crisis of masculinity that seems to have been an ongoing problem and trend for some years now. Um, the rise of popular internet figures like Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate as reflective of some deficit in society more broadly that is leading to both these YouTube figures and also a lot of kind of dangerous um, uh, socially maladaptive behavior offline, I would say, and whether or not the left has met the moment in the same way that the right has in terms of offering an off ramp to people who feel perhaps isolated, disillusioned by society, et cetera. And what people noted after our interview was that there had been this history um, of you having had some substantive criticisms of me online. And it felt odd to folks that we had never actually talked about it before we were kind of in this public setting, talking very cordially. Joining us now to discuss is YouTuber Vouch. Welcome to the show. My pleasure to be here. How y'all doing? We're doing all right. Um, and I was, I was imp impressed by your professionalism and decorum in that context. And I thought that you might be a good person to actually be able to have it out with and discuss some of our substantive disagreements and also anything else you want to talk about today. How does that sound? Oh, sure. Look, I love arguing with folks, but um, the uh, uh, the masculinity Andrew Tate business, uh, it's pretty serious. You know, I think it's important to take the opportunities you can to talk. Why does it sound like Vosh is in, a, is in like an aquarium? It's like underwater. I did... Talk about it. Plus, there's just no fun in getting off in the head every time you're... Is that him or is that Joy Gray? I, who knows? 
you know, in the same Zoom call as someone just because you've argued online. If folks did that, there'd be no way for anyone to do any kind of collaboration the way things are these days. I, I agree. And, and Vashak, I got to say, I don't see us as having really argued online. I have, you know, become aware over the years of a number of, you know, critical videos you've done um, about me. You, I believe, took offense to a radar that I did about defunding the FBI. No matter what she personally believes, she covers for fascists. Um, we were on opposite sides of the force the vote conversation. The specific force the vote movement was one of the most blatant grifts that got passed as left leaning activism in the past several years. And I'm sure there's been some other things over the years, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. What, what would you describe as your kind of substantive uh, disagreement with me or my political approach? Oh, I wish I'd written a list. I've got such a bad memory. <laughs> Look, the gist of it is this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're all, you know, not everyone's going to agree on every part of this. Some disagreement is natural. But I've noticed a tendency um, across the left where as a reaction to the idea that softness and identity politics has in some way weakened the left's uh, movement, you know, the left coalition, uh, I see some people who are moving towards this, uh, you know, well, the right and the left both have the same fundamental lead you know, valid critique of society, which is to say that there are elites in charge who have an undue and inordinate amount of power and that the best way to challenge those systems uh, is with a kind of like radical populist movement that is left leaning, but can reach out to the right, you know. Principally, I don't disagree with this. You know, it's definitely possible to take right populism against uh, economic elites and turn it in the right direction. Sometimes, sometimes they're just mad about Jews. Um, you know, really a coin flip on that one. And notice sometimes this, this discourse sort of spirals off and sends people in a bad direction. You know, I've criticized Jimmy Dore plenty. I'm sorry, just that sound of it. I'll, I'll ignore it, but it, God, that sound of his mic is just killing me. Uh, but Jimmy Dore is like, I don't think he has really very many, if at all, uh, redeemable qualities, if I'm being completely honest. Because uh, I feel like he's one of the poster children for this particular movement to the point now where he's just a republican indistinguishable in every way um if i had any criticisms of your takes they'd probably be somewhere in the line of that vein um i'm sure you know what i'm talking about right this tendency this like line that's been drawn yeah i've heard people make that criticism but i'm some i'm often confused as to why people make that criticism of me so for example um, I know that you did an extended video on my um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is right radar, right? Which was an argument attempting to, with a provocative title and framing, say, hey, conservatives, not conservative leadership, I want to make sure that we make a distinction between we're talking about Republicans or conservative voters versus Republican or conservative politicos who I think are often acting in bad faith, whereas some voters have a good faith interest in a lot of these issues where there's overlap between the left and the I really, I really wish, I really wish Vosh and her would get into it on Ukraine. Of course, I mean, of course I want that, right? But I wish it got to specific policy stuff like force to vote, Ukraine. Um, that's the stuff that I think, I think the substantive stuff, because right now it just feels like we're complaining about each other's aesthetics. The right, but are being drawn to the right because they don't see a space for it on the left. I just want to be clear. I'm not, I'm not giving any credence to what Marjorie Taylor Greene as a person is saying. But in the context of that radar, I'm saying, okay, let's let's acknowledge that for once, the right is adopting a position that has long belonged to the left, that these deep state institutions have historically over-targeted the left and progressive movements, whether it's the Black Panthers, whether it's communist and socialist movies in the uh, movements in the first half of this century. And let's make sure that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is not a good faith actor, who is buffoonish in her takes and in her politics and in her behavior. Let's not let her be the one that owns the space. Let's use this opportunity, this opening that Republicans have set up to actually advocate for the kinds of reforms to these institutions that the left has always wanted to have. Let's let's take this moment and write it in our own image instead of completely abdicating our voice in this space. And I was really clear in that in that radar. I don't like Marjorie Taylor Greene. What she's fighting for is stupid. She just wants to insulate Donald Trump. I say all of these things repeatedly. I say repeatedly that the right is not the answer, that people should not vote Republican, that I vote independent, that I would never vote Republican. And yet, despite what I feel to be, you know, an almost exhausting level of caveating, inevitably, there's someone who pipes up and says, oh, Brianna Joy Gray is running cover for Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think I called her... I forget what, what epithet I called her in the course of the radar, but... 
some kind it wasn't of racial nice. slur, no doubt. <laughs> no. <laughs> LOL. But you know, you know what I mean, Vosh. So, so what do you what do you say to that? Well, uh, I, I remember that. This was the uh, the FBI discourse. Mm -hmm. It just in the terms of Marjorie Taylor Greene and the um, you know broken clock being right twice a day thing. It reminds mm -hmm. me a little bit of like a Holocaust denier who you know will briefly acknowledge the existence of the Holocaust only when comparing it to um, uh, I don't know uh, COVID lockdowns or something, right? Uh, you know, very marginal, very narrow. I'm going to take the correct sort of framing on an issue for just a second. So it allows me to take, you know, an awful take. Um, Cause I don't, I don't think, I mean, and you said this, right? I don't think Marjorie Taylor Greene really has an issue with the, the, the oh my goodness, sorry, it's so early. <clears throat> the FBI or institutional power. It's really just a matter of where it's being used. And right. I, I'm kind of curious about the way it's, you know, kind of taken shape in this discourse too. Cause I don't really have an issue with the way the FBI has been behaving with regards to like the, um, uh, so the, the raid on Mar-a-Lago or any of the recent investigation stuff since the Trump administration. I mean, it's still the FBI, right? Not exactly an ally of the left, but broadly as an institution of the state, you know, as the feds. Um, they've been doing, it seems, a relatively upstanding job, certainly compared to what they've done in the past. And I worry about fermenting any kind of opposition to them now in the context of how the right sees them as being, uh, well... You know, if you accept the FBI as bad broadly, you're kind of giving leeway to the right there to make invalid criticisms against their behavior when they're targeting legitimately stuff they've done. So I think that's a perfectly legitimate argument, which is why literally in the context of that radar, I said part of the issue is that elites want to change institutions when they start to hold elites accountable. And that historically, the FBI and these kinds of deep state, for lack of a better word, institutions have been used to run cover for elites. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So regardless of how you feel about Mar-a-Lago, whether that's a was a political raid, and of course, there's all this stuff going now, on now with Biden and whether or not he's being treated similarly or differently. And that's a whole other quagmire. But regardless of whether you feel like Trump is being unfairly persecuted by the FBI or not, the left knows how it feels about the FBI. FBI. And why not let the left make its claims about how the left FBI should be reformed in a progressive way? If you have concerns about the right only using this um, uh, issue of FBI reform as a way to insulate Donald Trump. And I, I find that a lot of conservatives in the writing, rising audience, for instance, are very hostile to the idea that a powerful institution would be weaponized to defend the rich but attack the poor or even attack the left and attack the otherwise marginal. And they are open to that argument. And they, in fact, were very receptive to that argument in the comments of that video and elsewhere online. And so, again, I wonder what you make of that. I, I feel like that's a legitimate point that you made and one that I addressed in the context of the radar. So why, why the kind of hostility about the radar in particular? Well, because of the framing, which, to, to be fair, you kind of did right there, right? The Mar-a-Lago thing and the Biden thing ain't really comparable. The raid on Mar-a-Lago was because Trump had failed to comply with pre-existing demands to turn over the material. Seems like Biden just, you know, dropped spaghetti on out of his pockets and left a bunch of documents everywhere. Stupid, no defending it, but not well, really federal raid so, territory. No, I, I don't think they're comparable, and that's why Biden wasn't raided. I do think that because Biden took the position when the Trump documents were outstanding, that it was deeply irresponsible for someone, a president, to have been in this position, that I think he said something like, no one should ever be president who is so irresponsible with documents. And now here he is, obviously, in the exact same situation. So I do think Biden set himself up for a number of comparisons and claims being made about his fitness because of overreaching with the Trump argument. Oh, However, oh I totally I totally get it. You know, so I'll you, tell you a secret. I voted for uh, Bernie during the primaries, not uh, Biden. Yeah, um, I, I'm aware, but you you did vote for <laughs> Joe Biden during the general election and oh, you sure. advocated for people to, to, to do so, which is perfectly fine. But I do believe Correct that's take. another point of contention that you've had with me. Yes, you should have that people should have done that in a very consequential election. Could you imagine if Trump was in office during the war in Ukraine? Because some people are like, oh, so he wouldn't have gotten involved, which would also be bad. But knowing that Trump's outward proposal for what we should have done when he wasn't in office was paint Chinese flags onto F-22 fighter jets, bomb Russia, blame it on China, and start a war between Russia and China. I do not think he has the mental acumen or foreign policy experience to handle the situation with care from any position, period. 
that you proceed, you were, you disagreed with my hesitation to endorse Biden so quickly and my demand that the left hold out and including Bernie hold out a little longer in the endorsement process until he had gotten something more in the, in the line of concrete concessions from Joe Biden. Yeah, I'm happy to hit to that. But with regards to the, uh, the document thing, you said that the um, the question, uh, you know, he went so hard on the Mar-a-Lago raid thing, you know, mm -hmm. Biden, uh, and then it turns out, you know, he's got these dots around. I agree. This is a political, uh, uh, you know, falter on his part, for sure. It doesn't really speak to the FBI, though. I wanted to ask, though, you know, specifically, because when, when the cons are talking about the FBI, they're usually criticizing them for behavior, I think, is just and warranted, like the, the Mueller investigation, you know, for all the fun and fireworks that turned out to be. In principle, I get it, you know, much in the same way that the whole Russiagate business ended up turning up some pretty interesting info, indictments and knowledge and how the Russian government was making. See, the, the problem I have is I think that there are valid criticisms with the type of ethical, like what the FBI can do, can't do over like like uh, when it comes to like individual rights, when it comes to how it has acted in, in the past and how it could possibly continue to act in the future. But the problem is the criticisms that I would have for the FBI does not seem to be shared by people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, whose complaints with the FBI is they're investigating Trump. Stop. That's her criticism. You, she, you can like go into the specifics and she'll try to like walk you to, oh, well, now I actually have a problem with this specifically. But at the end of the day, she's walking back from that conclusion, walking back from the conclusion that Donald Trump tried to keep classified information, classified documents in his home for fun after those documents were have already been requested away from him by the National Archives, and he did not turn them all over. And he turned some over, but not them all over. So he's literally still trying to hide some. That that was it was evil and wrong for there to be a raid there, and that was politicization of the institution. So disgusting, so evil. The appointment of a special prosecutor. Don't care about that. Don't care about any of the processes put in place to make sure that it's fair to Donald Trump. It's, it's political because FBI. That's really what it is. It's political against FBI. So we'll either abolish the FBI, abolish the ability of the state to pursue Donald Trump in that manner because they, they decided to pursue him in that manner or replace it with an institution that is completely neutered or, or, or an institution that they will rebuild in their image, which scares me the most considering Marjorie Taylor Greene's politics. So I, I don't trust her. Now, if it was something like we're going to vote against a war to invade Iran or something like that, where we already know what kind of like what's clearly defined out, like with the type of changes that would happen, um, or, or the policy that I vote in favor of or not in favor of, then it's like, okay, maybe you can work with somebody in an isolated instance like that. But I don't trust Marjorie Taylor Greene on the FBI. I just don't. Making it. Cat, come on out of there. Silly. Uh, the Russian government was making a good effort to, um, you know, uh, lean on the scales however they could. Uh, it seems like, at least at the moment, I don't really know what you mean when you say uh, reforms to the FBI. What does that mean? Because when... And when MTG says it, she means, like, don't go after cons ever. So, like, what what reform are we, like, looking for here? Well, to be frank, what if, what MTG was advocating for was abolishing the FBI. That's what was trending. That's the phraseology that people were using, abolish the FBI. And I'm of the mind that given the historical, I believe in the radar, I mentioned that 85%, I think it was, of all. So getting rid of the FBI, you if you propose that, you can only be taken seriously, just like the people who said abolish all these other institutions. If you have a proposal for what that organization would be replaced with, what would be the substance and different the substantive differences between this institution and the new one you're building that makes it necessary that you want to completely spend who knows how much money rebuilding a new investigative system to carry out investigations and do raids and and so forth. As FBI investigations, you know, wiretapping, assassinations, all of the things that it's done have targeted the left. So on balance, do I care about the Mueller investigation or a raid in Mar-a-Lago uh, as compared to the murder of civil rights leaders and the wiretapping of everybody from Martin Luther King to Elvis? No, I would happily abolish the FBI. So that's top level. If people are making that argument, even if it means inc incidentally that there are some let's say, legitimate investigations that don't occur, 
I would, I personally on balance would be happy with that compromise. Now that's not a compromise that needs to be made. Any number of institutions exist to investigate errant presidents and the like. The DOJ can continue to exist. This argument is often brought up in the context of like, let's say abolish ICE or abolish the police. They're abolished the NSA. There have been institutions that have accommodated the needs of those, you know, of those institutions before those relatively newer versions existed. And I don't think that simply asking for substantive reform or abolishment of one institution means that everyone else gets off the hook, which is again, why I made it clear in my radar that advocating for systemic reform for the purpose of insulating elites against criticism is absolutely the opposite of what we should do. But we should be cognizant of the fact that these institutions are designed and are put in place to do the exact opposite, to protect elites and target people who are marginalized politically or otherwise. Sure. And if, if they, well, if they the right are, wants right? To, it, yeah, and if the right wants to kind of step in it by popularizing the idea of abolish the FBI, and if that movement's going to have some kind of legs rhetorically or otherwise, if there's going to be a, mo a moment for that, why not have people who are much more knowledgeable than I, frankly, design the kinds of reforms that they think would actually be beneficial to the left? And I had some people on the podcast to try to talk about what those reforms would actually be. I think it was uh, Alex Vitale. And then I think I spoke to also Cornell West shortly after to try to to try to pin them on what they would advocate for in terms of substantive reforms to the FBI and whether they thought that this was a moment that the left should be pushing. And while I think that Cornell West did agree that this was something that we could politicize and take over if we wanted to, I think very few people were willing, or maybe we just hadn't put enough thought in it because it's, you know, a new moment. And so no, there were no substantive criticisms or substantive changes that could be made to the FBI? Because, okay, here's my thing. As as a libtard, I believe in institutions. I don't believe in people. I, I'm very scared about the idea of power centralizing too much around one person because then it's a lot easier corruptible. I believe deeply in institutions. And so we do need a federal body like the FBI to carry out the investigations that they do, to carry out the raids that they do, to do the work that they do, right? And if you were to just abolish the FBI right now, there would be a lot of work either there's pushed on to other police departments, other institutions, which wouldn't be able to uh, bear the load, or it would just like, we see the quality of these investigations, all of it just go down as, or, or nobody doing it, that nobody would be doing the work. So the question is, what do you replace it with if you're going to abolish it, or what would you reform it into, which is something that I seem to more agree, as, agree with now, since nobody has made the argument to me about what type of institution should be made in its place. And if that argument was made to me, I'd be very interested in hearing it. I hear the same complaint about NATO all the time. And also, and I always ask, what kind of defensive agreement should be made in Europe in its place? Because the defensive agreement has kept stability in Europe, peace in Europe, and allows states like Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania to feel protected. So, what what other institution in their place? I have yet to get receive an answer for that either. And so right now I'm I'm more reform minded and I want to hear those proposals for reform. And to what constructively, like or concretely rather, that would look like. But I think that's, it's a conversation the left should be having, right? That's, that's a conversation my, that people Yeah, go that's, ahead. Though that's my issue, right? You know, Alex and Cornell aren't the people with their hands in the levers. The right is, or at least potentially could be, you know. Well what um, what do you mean by it, that? I mean that right now, you know, we, we talk about material conditions. The historical context of this discussion, abolish the FBI. This is not one in which we're having a level-minded conversation about the exact ways in which to reform the institution. I, I agree, but that's we're exactly what about, I'm pushing for. No, well, but, but hold on. But it ain't happening, you know. Right, but you've why got, isn't it happening, two, Bosh? Well, this is the same issue I had with endorsing Biden. There isn't a third option. You've got exactly two in this case. Well, you've no, got, there, was, there was a third option, and I know that because I voted for the, the third president? option. Well, no, yes. in, the, in, the, in the general election, not in the primary. Yeah, no, in the general election. Um, election i voted third party right like i said there were two options um That's two not, options that you, can happen well wait well hold on hold on you know um i've just i've never i've never really given a damn about you know well here's a edge case that perfectly represents my virtues or whatever you know you've got what you've got in the case well, of the fbi well, I, I, just to be clear got, i Bosch, i didn't vote third party because it represents my virtues i represent third party because practically speaking if third parties get i believe to 55 percent of the vote percentage they get additional funding and it makes it more pop possible for a third party to get ballot access and to be an actual contender and change that oppressive two-party duopoly reality that we live under today it's a real thing that can happen if enough people actually do in fact vote third party okay and i'm happy to support in a way, third in a way that throwing my passed. vote away for joe biden and 
Washington, D.C. is actually doing nothing with my vote. Well, wait, where was her vote? Where was she actually? What state is she from? So if we're talking about political pragmatism. He became political, president. Right. With or without my vote in Washington, D.C., not even a state. That oh, if, he's in, if she's in Washington, D.C., well, they, she, yeah, Biden was going to win. Like, I don't really care too much about her specifically. But there's also a difference between her specifically doing that in Washington, D.C., where Biden's going to win like 92 percent of the vote anyway. He won 92 percent of the vote in D.C. Um, you could still um, not encourage your audience to do that who are going to be living in swing states, which it did feel like from the tenor of the conversation, she wasn't really encouraging people to go out and vote for Biden, which she should have considering the the, stru the fight that was that election and how disastrous uh, the war in Ukraine or any other number of issues it could have been if, if Trump inherited that, that power, uh, the power of the presidency. She did exactly that. She said that other people should vote for Biden. She said people should vote for Biden. I did not know that. Did she really? I don't, as an audience member, she encouraged every single safe state voter, which is the vast majority of voters. And she said that people in swing states should vote for Biden. She said that people in swing states should vote for Biden. Did she? If she did, then I don't have too many complaints. No, she said safe state voters. She encouraged every single safe state voter, the vast majority of voters, whose votes don't matter. Okay, so she, no, let, you're not clarifying my question. So she said that people who are in swing states should vote for Biden. Did she say that? That is what I'm looking for, because that is the most important part. Did she or did she not say that? Because that's the part I, I care about. What she tells somebody in a safe state to do, I mean, it can have a negative impact, depending on what somebody thinks is a safe state, but then not becomes a safe state, like the Georgian, like Georgia for Republicans. She directly addressed non-swing state voters exclusively, as far as I know. Okay, so she has not ever called for anybody to vote for Biden then. Because, like, unless somebody is going to give me information, I don't know. Because that, that would be a criticism I would have, considering the importance of that the political struggle in 2020 when it comes to ha get, having Trump still in the executive branch would, would have been a disaster. It would have been an absolute disaster. And, and she knows it. And so that's why she should have encouraged people in swing states to vote for Biden. So where's the disaster? Okay, you're not listening to me. Insulin dependent. I believe it is... Somebody's job, if you're informed in politics and you're left-leaning, I think it would be good for you to go tell people to vote for Biden in swing states at the very least. Because if you're politically minded, you should be smart enough to know if Biden loses or Trump gets another term, what he's going to do with the judges for the next four years. What's going to happen to the Supreme Court as it becomes even more conservative than it already is? What's going to happen with the war in Ukraine? What's going to happen if he if he gets into an international incident and he starts behaving like he did with Syria withdrawals or like he did with North Korea or any other number of instances with his lack of knowledge? That is the problem. If you have a big platform and you're involved in politics and you can go people to go participate and support Biden and you didn't, then there's two outcomes. Either A, you're like a conservative or independent voter and you don't support Biden for any number of reasons. Like, uh, for example, you want Trump to win, which is to, if you want Trump to win, that would be the reason why. Or two, whatever her reasoning is, which I don't think is, is I, I would like to hear reasoning. Like, I don't think it's, it's, it's legit, it's, it's logical for you to do that in these swing states when this race is so important. How, how much of a negative impact it's going to have on people's lives. So whether or not she is saying people and saying, whatever she's saying about people in safe states, these swing states are important and she should be encouraging people to go vote for Biden. He should have, of course. It's too late now. But during that race, yes, I believe it is Biden should have won. And it was and it's better for the country that he did. That that is the most effective way for me to actually politically well, represent my interests. I'm not That's, my point here ain't about criticizing your vote. So that only two people were gonna be president. And there were right, only but, two real paths to FBI. No, no, no. But those are those are two different but Fosh, I wanna be really clear here. Mm -hmm. You said there were two options. You didn't say at first there's two options for what a presidential outcome was going to be. But my vote is not not connected to what I want the presidential outcome to be. There are other political realities that my vote can determine. And it's the same thing with this FBI stuff. I would have loved a world, Vouch, where you and I were having a conversation about, gosh, you know, 
I know the FBI has done a lot of messed up stuff. And if there's an opening here for the left elected left representatives to be a part of drafting what new legislation would look like to reform the FBI, we should be pushing for that and, and making sure that it's written in our image, not a right winger's image. But instead, now you and I are back and forth on the internet, or at least you are criticizing me on the internet for even wanting to reform the FBI, which seems to me to sh which should be well, a pretty obvious reform, bedrock abolish. left. Abolish. Yeah, I would, I, I would also abolish the FBI, which should be a bedrock non non diff, you know un, you know easy principle for left people to adopt oh know? i don't think no i don't think so at all i think the federal police are a fairly necessary institutional force uh, much in the same way that in their current system we need you know municipal the, and please don't get off the voting thing we need we need to get her to just like say that biden needed to win like that was important it was important for biden to win therefore it was important for people who could have had an impact in the vote to go and vote that he should be hammering here on the, her on this this is like a this is like an easy, this is, I think this would be an easy W because then all you need to do is go issue by issue comparing Donald Trump and Biden. And it's going to be, it's going to be, he's going to be better on unions. He's going to be better on education. He's going to be better on LGBTQ plus issues. He's going to be better on foreign policy. He's going to be better on essentially every issue. And then you're trapped in saying, well, then I, I just don't like Biden. If, at that point, that's what you just need to say. I don't like Biden. And my dedication to trying to get third parties in there is more important than us winning this election. And if that is true, then you're kamikaze for the third parties because they're most likely not going to become popular anyway. Police. Uh, though, obviously, they are a largely harmful institution. You just can't up and abolish them. You need to take the work to put in systems that support the same basic functions and practices Vosh, they engage was your, in. Was your response to me that, well, I think that Brianna is going too far in saying that we should Well, I, I haven't gotten to my point yet because we keep getting we keep getting edge cased here. The okay, issue I ahead. have, and you know, we don't need to make no analogies to uh, Biden or Trump or whatever. The issue here is that in this historical context, there are only, you know, regardless of what our paths you support broadly or in the long term, there are two attitudes that are institutionally supported towards the FBI. One of which is the standard boilerplate, let them do what they do, you know, Democrats, whatever, moderates. Um, and then the Republicans who want to abolish it. The issue that I have here is that the desire, well, that's true. I, I actually don't agree with Vosh here. I don't think that's the only two options. I think there's like more broader options. And when you say the Republicans want to abolish it, I, 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 it's either, I don't know if it's even abolish it. I think Marjorie Taylor Greene say stuff like that. A lot of Republicans just want, kind of want to take it over and politicize it for themselves. And I do think that uh, like I, there are a few Republicans who are like more institutionally minded, maybe like a Susan Collins, I don't know. But I would say most of them probably don't even want to abolish it, more just like take it over. There's no, the, no, 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 there's no, wait, 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 please, please, please. There's no institutional support for like moderate reform. There are politicians who don't want to touch that is, the FBI. That's a tautology. And Bosh, politicians you, you, who you are, want to you abolish are, it. You are, you are framing the argument in a limited way. You are defining two choices. The and world then saying, is limited. No, no, no. You're defining two choices and then saying there's two choices. Mm -hmm. There is in fact a world where we, our job on the left, I believe, is to create additional choices, not to sit around okay, in this so doomer. This wait a minute, wait a minute. What I'm not to, to sit around in this, this doomer, this doomer zone, saying, doomer. "Well, we can't do anything, so let's let's be angry." Vosh, you call me a what a, a subhuman something, <laughs> like a sub a subhuman well, fascist or something. Force the vote fans and Brianna Joy Gray fans are fucking subhuman pieces of shit Damn. who are despicable people who are Damn. only in it for the aesthetic and for the grift. Damn. You wrote down my advocating... insults, but I didn't write anything down? Come on, no fair. Well, I've never insult I've never I've never mentioned you in public, Vosh. I, I've complete... never said anything about That's you in my funny. entire life. Damn, she's going. She's going hard right now. Vosh is Vosh is she she's 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 become a rhino. She's gonna run him down. He's gonna run him down. He's gotta he's gotta put up the city defenses, put up the city walls. That's fine. So, so, You're, so, we're both public figures and we but, have the right to take shots at each other at our will. But I ain't got the But there is no this other because, because I, I haven't but I just wanna make sure you you were saying right now that there are two options. I wanna be really clear. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you when you say there is no movement on the left to abolish the FBI. In fact, that is the sum total of my criticism. Why is there no movement on the left to abolish or at least reform the FBI? Why is Marjorie Taylor Greene in the context of a self interest? to campaign to protect Donald Trump, the only person who's talking about reforming an institution that who's who's raised on debt or reform. If you want to reform it, let's talk about reform, Bosh. I'm 100% on board well, with she's that. she's talking about abolition. So are right. you when I asked you what reforms you well, make. Well, I, I, Brianna Joy Gray, would, but I am not, I'm not going to die on this hill. I'm going to talk 
I want in a community with people who are like-minded, Vaj, about what the best strategy for it is. I'm not interested in defending my take. It's just a take. It's just a thought. It's just an idea I that I would takes. love to I love develop. About takes. No, I don't want takes, Vaj. I want policy to make the left better. I want to change, make the world that we live in better. I'm not interested in scoring points on the internet. So if someone comes up to me and says, well, damn, I have a right. damn, she's she's kind of. It sounds like she's kind of just calling him a debate bro now. Oh snap! Come on, Vosh, put him up. Tweak yeah. to your identity. I have a tweak to your philosophy. I have a tweak to your plan. Let's develop this in concert with other people who are much more knowledgeable than I. I say yes and to that, Vosh. Okay. I'm not interested so in tearing anybody yes, down. I'm yes anding you right now. So okay, let's, let's dial it back because I feel like we've rolled down a very steep hill very quickly. The point that I'm trying to make here is that there are times and places to make certain types of criticisms. Now, whether or not I even agree with the abolish the FBI bit, you know, it's fundamentally what this strikes to me is like an Andrew Tate fan screaming, you know, Andrew Tate's been arrested on accusations of sex trafficking. Let's abolish the police. He shouldn't be able to be arrested for that. And a lefty stride in saying, oh, you want to abolish the police, do you? Hmm, well, maybe that would be a good idea. Now, I understand the temptation of this argument because you're meeting them where they're at. They're interested in this thing. But the truth of the matter is, and the thing that frustrates me is, they're not actually interested in police abolition. They're interested in getting their guy off. And while you think that you're doing our side, you know, um, polling people interested in getting Donald Trump off over to broader FBI abolition, I think what you're actually doing is the opposite, which is you're giving the institutional legitimacy of the left's critique of the FBI over to the far right who just want to get Donald Trump off. And I think that's kind of iterated in the fact that despite all your caveats and criticisms, MTG still quote tweeted you touting around, oh, look at this lefty former, you know, secretary for Bernie Sanders. Even they agree the FBI has gone too far. And when they're in that mode, they'll take any stance. They'll say, oh, yeah, they killed Dr. King. They 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 killed Fred Hampton, you know, not that they give a shit. Um, and then they'll run with that as a specific part of their program to get their fascist wannabe dictator off uh, investigations and charges. But I don't think it does much to support real criticism of the FBI. I think it taints criticism of the FBI because it associates them with this insane MAGA, uh, you know, uh, hysteria. I think it worsens our arguments because it connects us and emboldens them to their argument. So what arguments is the, are the left... You, you mentioned that this is the wrong time. Is there a movement separate and apart from the conservative movement that is at all vocalizing any interest in reforming the FBI in any way? I don't even know what reforms we're talking about here. What are we looking to do exactly? Because I don't know if I'd agree with that. This is the I main miss. question. This is all he has to keep asking. Like, I will support a movement to reform the FBI if this move, if the discussion is centered on those specific reforms and not entertaining these Republican delusions that Donald Trump uh, getting his home raided was this evil sin against God and not because he kind of, you know, violated the law and would not return the documents and that the FBI did not horrifically and like with the deep state steal the election, all this other nonsense that is repeated time and time again. So what, what matters here is the specific reforms. I would be fine with the movement to reform the FBI. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? I believe in institutions. So if we can strengthen these institutions and make them stronger and better for our society, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I want our people to, to trust in our institution. It's, it, it leads to a better society. But I need to hear the reforms. The abolition thing is complicated. You can go a lot of roads with that. But in terms of reform, maybe, you know, if you could bite into something a bit more moderate, what would you do exactly? Are we talking about like uh, the revoc like, you know, more public uh, warrant uh, approval procedures on the part of judges or like uh, pullbacks and what they can do to get wiretaps on? Or what would you do exactly? I think that it's remarkable that in 20 seconds of applying yourself to considering what reforms would be beneficial to the left, you came up with two that sound really good. I'm however, fine with those. The right spot, though. But however, there's been absolutely no interest in or any conversation in the least about that on the left. So here's my thought. I completely agree that Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of these right-wing figures are operating in bad faith, but they deny it, right? So what better way to demonstrate that their argument about abolishing the FBI is complete fluff that's only being used to insulate Donald, Donald Trump, one of the most elite people in the world as a former president of the United States, other than actually doing what they have not done, which is promulgating legislation from the left for the left that actually would be substantive reforms, the kinds of which I think would appeal to a right 
audience, a conservative leaning audience, even if it would miss the elected Republicans who, of course, have bad faith interests. How, in how this would position. that own them, though? Wouldn't they want that? They don't like the FBI. That's just well, doing wait, what but, they want. But, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If if the left drafts left legislation that would reform the FBI in ways that benefit the left and the right adopts it and votes for it and passes it, I hate to break it to you, but that's called a win. That's a good thing that well, just happened. Would it prevent the FBI from continuing their investigation into Donald Trump it's, or would it be substantive reforms? Uh, Vosh, it's drafted by the left. So, uh, no, of course not. The left, I, I presume, it could the be whatever they want it to be. The left things all the time, you know. I'm not, I'm not staking any what, claims what, here on their trustworthiness. The Democratic Party that just spent the entire last two years making their entire identity about 1-6 and, and impeaching Trump for a million, uh, you know, over and over and over again and 1-6 commissions and all of that is not going to do anything that absolves Trump from responsibility, nor do I think they should, although they should have the appearance of not having a witch hunt because they think that hurts them politically and there's no need for any of that. If, if he's reform, guilty, what he's guilty of, he's guilty of. And what he's not, he's not. put forward that does not in any way impede the investigation of Donald Trump, if it's a sensible FBI reform, the Republicans will just call it woke. Uh, they'll not vote in it and none of their voters. Exactly. So here we are here. This is this is I, what I believe are the two. Can I be for real? Like, I, I understand like people are like, oh, we don't want the appearance of a witch hunt. I don't want a witch hunt. But let's also not pretend that like Trump having scandals and us making fun of him for having scandals and, and attacking him for going through scandals is bad for us. Can I be for real? I understand that like he's had so many that since he like is such a fucking moron knuckle dragger that it could feel like bullying once he's like done his 50th scandal of the week but if you look at trump's like approval rating past the presidency the reason it hasn't recovered is that you know that time when people leave the white house and their approval rating goes up happened for obama happens for most presidents that's not happening for trump because the democrats are making sure to remind people because we know he might run again in in 2024 in fact he already announced he's running again in 2024 we're reminding people like hey you know any problems you're seeing with the biden administration Remember this guy, he's waiting in the background to take the presidency from uh, Biden in 2024. And what is he gonna do? He's gonna do all the stuff he did before. He's gonna be as chaotic as he was before. And what is he saying now? He's proposing bombing Russia with Chinese painted F-22s. He's, he's not returning his classified documents and he kept them because he wanted to seem cool. He's saying these ridiculous things about any number of issues and on top of these investigations through his taxes re revealing a lot of pretty sketchy stuff, investigations into his business practices. Like all of this, like is reminding people of, of exactly who this man was and, and why they voted him out in the first place. That memory isn't leaving. That's why his approval rating right now is so low. And all the polling numbers from every single polling institution, no matter how right wing it is, shows that a Biden Trump matchup right now has Biden winning every single time, most of the time by like seven or eight points. So people can say that like, oh, you know, you're going too hard on Trump. It's working. Why stop? He's not in office for a reason. Because a lot of the motivation that got people out to vote against Trump was because of Trump, because of how hard the, the Democrats attacked. Like, I, I used to somewhat agree with this, but I've actually been dragged into the other direction. Options that exist. The left puts forward good faith legislation that would address some of the legitimate concerns that are being raised by the right about the FBI, not insulate Donald Trump from criticism. What and also, it will also, well, the FBI has spent the last hundred years of existence growing. To be clear, I think we can also pair that aggressive messaging on Donald Trump, and we should start doing it on Ron DeSantis soon, if he announces as well. Um, I want those two to kill each other in the primary, leave them both weak no matter what. Uh, I hope it's vicious, a lot more vicious than a Democratic primary. I want Trump to be Trump 100%. Um, I, I do think we need to pair it with a strong working class agenda when it comes to you know union rights, minimum wage, climate change policy, all of these issues, uh, healthcare policy. You know, Don, you know, Joe Biden said he was going to do a healthcare plan. We still don't see it. It's not out. I mean, he could talk about what he has done when it comes to hearing aids and medication for elderly and making it more affordable and stuff like that, and, and talk about building upon that to maybe make a public option in 2024 or more. Being ambitious, marijuana legalization. He needs to he needs to pair it with a bold agenda. And right now, Biden's polling numbers. I don't know if you guys have seen this recently. Um, uh, polling Biden. 
if you go it's it, it's been doing uh, like a lot better you can see it's dipped recently i don't know what poll came out but it's up from the 37 38 like low points of july it's like 43 42 like this is like a significant improvement and this is because of the agenda that he's actually tried to pass getting through and the energy price is recovering and he's doing really well right now so you know i'm just saying gotta also invest a little bit into the attacks that's all i'm saying growing its power and growing its reach there is a i think a perfectly legitimate argument about per various aspects of the way that the department of justice and the fbi have focused on donald trump and some like what and inequities well, I thought you just said this legislation wouldn't do anything. Well, that's that's my whole point. So why are you asking about that, Vash? Well, wait, that wait. But, but, then why did you just say? Minute, but you Vash. just said that though. You were just I like, okay, well, address some of the I think it's fair to be honest. Concerns. I think it's fair. I think that some combination of the media's behavior and the FBI's behavior. It's obviously even when people do bad things, they can be politically motivated in their approach. I think it's perfectly possible. I don't know, right? Like, well, I don't wait, know. Wait, we're doing the narrative. Let me let me finish the sentence. You just asked me, Vash. Let me finish the sentence. Let me finish the sentence. I don't know. So that's. That's why I don't want to opine. Burns but I'm not trying to immoral, opine on, for example, what war, war machine. Thank you for interrupting Brianna Joy Gray. Give me a tier one sub for the third month in a row. I appreciate it. Whether or not this narrative that's out there that the FBI held up the um, making public that Joe Biden had these outstanding documents until after the midterms because they didn't want to hurt Democrats. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not interested in. Wait, OK, you can't just say I don't know if that's true or not. That's a claim that has no evidence as of right now. So in my mind, if there's not evidence for a claim, I would disbelieve it until there's evidence. She's just gonna be like, question mark. Like it was six, it was a six day time period. I don't wanna get too much into specifics, but it is not impossible to believe in, the, in that in the six day time period, it didn't become front page news promulgating that narrative but i think that there it's completely possible that there are some there is some legitimacy in terms of the targeted nature of those attacks if there's not then great then there's but now nothing. this is this is their but, narrative now but but look here's the point vosh ignore all of that the point is that you get to design you can't you can't just come out give the opinion that that entertains the delusions or as of right now since no evidence has come forward again un unfounded delusions uh fear and you entertain it and he's like i disagree with that and now you're like forget everything you disagree with moving past that what do you mean ah oh, whatever keep creating here's here's what's so interesting you keep coming up with versions of legislation you don't like when the reality is this is a, an opportunity to come up with the exact legislation you do like for the left to be advocating for whatever it is you don't want to abolish i do want to abolish My whatever congressman? you Whatever you want to do is what we should be advocating for, is my belief, progressives to actually take up and run with. The progressives... slight power that I have is over discourse, I, not, I'm not policy. I'm not talking and about the, you literally, well, wait, Bosch, wait, wait, wait. obviously. Well, I, I'm talking I about what we push that. elected I, officials to do. I understand that, but notice how the rhetoric has shifted, right? Always little bits of it pop up. What we're talking about right now, the left constructing criticisms of the FBI in the form of policy and legislation, that has nothing to do with giving the right accolades on getting a broken clock, you know, twice as right kind of deal, on criticizing the FBI, nor on pulling people from the right over, nor on meeting some of the their legitimate criticisms of the FBI, of which they have only one, by the way, which is the fact that the FBI doesn't work for them. Now we're just talking about crafting policy to reform the Dude, this is unironically right, though. The, the main criticism, it feels like a lot of times, not from everybody, some people are genuine, but a lot of times it just feels like th this is like an effort. They just want to they just want the reins. It really does feel like that. Police, the FBI. That's why, like that, but that's the thing. That's why I disagree with his to totalist, uh, wh whatever. I don't want. I don't want to use fucking Brianna Joy Gray's words because I don't know how to pronounce it because I'm I'm very bad with English. But that's why I didn't like the black and white dichotomy that Vosh painted. There is a gray. It's just the gray is depressing because the people in the gray are people who don't want to abolish the FBI. They just want to politicize it in their direction. I are well, police no. after all, fundamentally, I... and I've always supported reforming the police in many ways. But notice how now we're talking about something reasonable, which is, hey, you know, the federal police are, as many police institutions, rather well, corrupt. And I, I hate to break it to you, but we there's a part of this community that has been talking about something reasonable the entire time. And your 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 reluctance to participate in that is a, is a choice. And that's completely fine. But there's some of us who have said, 
We were very like doing disapp- what Marjorie Wait Taylor Greene wants by abolishing the FBI and giving them accolades and saying Look, they have legitimate I, criticism I, and saying I, the FBI I, might have been politically motivated when it, they have Trump. Yeah. Notice, no, you slip in like these no, narratives here, right? I, I think that which I, aren't well, necessary when but, criticizing the FBI in like a you, formative You way. obviously like the FBI a lot more. Like, I, I, I'm, you're not, you're not going to convince me to not want to abolish the FBI. So I don't even think we should go down that road. See, well, then, uh, then at uh, the end of the day, all you want to do is what she wants to do, and well, such so you're prattling about that's, it. it's meaningless. That's, you just want well, to do. Well, uh, uh, wait, no, no, I don't no, think no, I'm wait, prattling about anything. In, this is my a, show, and I'd like you to a, offer wait, me wait, a modicum of respect here, Bosch. We're Vosh. both prattling. It's okay. It's fine. Prattling is fine. It's a free country. But no, it's, at the it's end not. Of the day, I. I Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, oh, boy, boy. Vosh is getting in the trenches. Hey, woman, you're prattling. Ah, good. He's like, then he's like, hey, you're not going to go. Oh, you know, actually, we're all prattling. We're all prattlers in the eye of God. Oh, here we go. I, take, I think that's disrespectful. And I've been, look, in the background we're, of all we're of this. We're both grown up here. It's fine. Wait yeah. a minute, Vosh. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. In the background of all of this is you are sitting here in a way that is, um, in the background is, I'm, I've been trying to- The thing is, this is the problem when Vosh talks to somebody, and this is also the same problem Destiny runs into, is he on the show called her a subhuman piece of shit, right? And people like her that. Now, he said that because he deeply disagrees with, with Brianna Joy Gray. And I agree with probably the majority of Vosh's criticisms of Brianna Joy Gray and, and things she said, whether it's around Ukraine, forced to vote, Joe Biden, etc. right? But- even though there's probably things I 100% agree with her as well, considering we're both left-wing vaguely. Um, when you say that, all she has to do to appeal to anybody with uh, the slightest sense of normalcy, me included, is be like, now, you can call for politeness now, but when I wasn't here talking to you, you called me a subhuman piece of shit. And, like, he either has to keep that same level of fire that he gave her when she wasn't there here to show consistency, or it does make him look weak to some degree. You get what I'm saying? It, like, to anybody with the slightest sense of normalcy, that's gonna appeal to them. Downplay, I've been trying not to emphasize what exactly your response to my radar has me. actually been. The reality is you called me a subhuman piece of shit mm-hmm. <laughs> as a consequence. She's doing this, this is smart, I mean. It's it's an easy thing to, to pull back to be like, hey, look, come on. Like, you can call for normalcy now, but you weren't normal with me earlier. Of what I think is, and I, what you just characterize as a reasonable conversation about reforming the FBI. I don't and think I, I called you that over that. Wait a minute. I completely respect that you don't want to abolish the FBI. I don't care. Like, I mean, I, we have a difference of opinion there. I don't think it's worth calling anybody names or accusing, you know, any ad hominem attacks. But my point is this. If all you are willing to get to, if all the, the, the place where you're comfortable is to say, wow, in this moment, it would be nice if left progressives or Democrats in Congress were advocating for the kinds of reforms that they think are valuable in this moment to provide a meaningful contrast to the kind of self-interested elite protecting reforms that Marjorie Taylor Greene is going for. Wow, I should advocate for that. And to the extent that I think that Brianna is not advocating for that, I can say, well, I think that Brianna needs to have a more focused message. I think that Brianna is going too far, but I would settle for, I, I would advocate for this. And it is frustrating to me. I do agree with Brianna that it's frustrating to me that uh, the left Congress members have nothing to say about any of this when they spent years talking about defunding the police, defunding ICE, and having this institutional critique. Where are they in this moment? Well, I'm not saying But that's not what happens. Yeah, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying at the end of the day, you know, you can dress it up as much as you want. I think that my main issue is, and this this would be my main, like, substantive critique. I want to see more putting forward of your reforms and, and a left-wing critique of the FBI and what would need to be changed. And I'm saying reforms, because the odds of you abolishing the FBI are very, very unlikely. Very unlikely. So... If 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 you if that becomes a political reality, then that could become a discussion. But it's not political reality. So let's talk reforms. That's the first thing. We need, I feel like we need to reel it in more, like closer to what's achievable, right? And what would those reforms be? Proposing those reforms, packaging those reforms, talking about it, organ building organizations around those reforms, having those discussions with with activists and such. But it feels like 
we shouldn't be spending any time whatsoever giving any credence to Marjorie Taylor Greene or their critiques because their critiques come from a completely separate place and they want to build a completely different institution in its place. For example, I have critiques with the immigration system in this country, but when I hear Marjorie Taylor Greene say, we have a crisis at the border, I agree with that. I think we have a humanitarian crisis at the border. I think we have a crisis of not having enough immigration judges that is partially contributing to this. I think that we need to do what we do, what we can to work with local governments across South America to stabilize these countries and deal with the destabilizing nature of the cartels and other things. Like, not saying, send, saying sending forces, but do what we can. Um, because that will benefit the United States by having less refugees even have to come to us in the first place, right? That's why I'm a globalist, by the way. Um, uh, part of the reason I'm a globalist. And that discussion is not what Marjorie Taylor Greene wants. Marjorie Taylor Greene said it, like, I think in the last 24 hours, she wants to take the tanks we're sending to Ukraine and send them to the border. She wants to make the border look like it's like, like a stationed war zone, like we're about to, like, go to war with these immigrants. I understand when a strong border, we don't need to completely militarize the border. That 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 is uh, that, that that the idea we need fucking tanks on the border is insane. We do not need tanks on the border. That is that is absurd. So when we're talking about giving credence to her, the same woman who wants tanks on the border and is a QAnoner or was a QAnoner before she renounced it and said, "Oh, I was just sucked up onto the internet nonsense." It's hard for me to believe that she has any substantive critiques of the FBI outside of hey, they should be servile to King Lord Donald Trump. The fascist said that she wants to get rid of an investigative body that's investigating her corrupt dictator pick. And your answer to that was, yes, but for woke reasons. And that framing will always be something that I take issue with. It doesn't matter how sincere or legitimate the criticisms are. Uh, there are times when you have to understand that the material course of history is guiding your country in a direction where you're going to have to focus on other priorities. Like, it's with the police thing, right? We're in a very dangerous position in this country right now. Democracy might not last here, you know, nobody can see the future, but it seems like Republicans are pretty openly anti-democracy at this point. They've been working hard to get rid of it on whatever level they're capable of. And reforming the FBI. That's, that's, that's fine, you know, depending on how it's done, if it's reasonable. But the narratives addressing the right's reasonable criticisms, they have only one, and it's that the FBI don't work for them. You know, oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene happened to be right in this one. No, she wasn't. She doesn't give a shit about what the FBI has done. Neither do any of her followers. You're not going to own any of them or show them up by giving them a better version of the legislation. They'll say well, it's woke I, and they'll I toss it in the I disagree trash. with that. I disagree with that, Vash. I think that I know for a fact that many of her followers actually do agree with me. I know for a fact- When you say abolish the FBI, the exact thing that she said. Yeah, I know for a fact that many of her followers agree with me on two important points. That the FBI is an institution with an enormous power that has been used poorly to target people who are historically vulnerable, including people like them because they're low income and things like that. And additionally, I think that they agree that it should not be an institution that exclusively protects elites. And I think that that's a good place to work from and a much more useful place Their framing than sitting around. Is totally conservative well, so wait a minute. Let's, bias. Let's, let's talk about your framing, Vouch, because you just accused me of wanting to do what Marjorie Taylor Greene wants. But By your woke, words, do you both wanted to abolish the FBI? If I could just right? finish the sentence. My you accused me of doing, you just said that you want to do, I want to do what Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to do, do, but for woke stuff. And so I want to ask you, is not wanting a civil rights leaders, of not wanting Fred Hampton to be murdered, woke? Can you go back in time and keep him from being murdered? Because if so, God damn. Is that is what you think that I'm advocating for? Or could there be some pers prospective value in protecting people who are oppositional? To she, she, she will not engage with the, with the streamer snarkiness. She will not. No, dude. Oof, I don't know if the streamer snarkiness really works in this conversation. This is very different than a Twitch debate. It feels different than a Twitch debate feels very different uh the the tempo is different the 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 nature of the conversation is different to the government and making sure that the fba fbi's powers are restrained the republicans will not do this 
the Republicans have no interest in right. restraining the power of the FBI other than so curtailing it and using it for this, their own. This is such an important point. This is offline, I think. I think that affected it, too. I think that did affect it. When you don't have a crowd to play off of, it's it does change a different. It does definitely change the, the nature of the conversation. I think that is actually what defines why there are these two halves of the left that exist right now. There is one half of the left that I think is really exemplified by the statement that you just made, which is that the right won't do this. Or sometimes you'll say things like, Democrats won't do this. And the entire political discourse is limited by what you believe the pre-existing actors in place are willing to do, which means at no point is there any conversation, even in loose, ridiculous kind of podcasty formats, at no point in academic spaces and political spaces and media spaces, is there any place to germinate ideas that have the power to actually push the Overton window in any way? Absolutely. And I think that that's I think that's really destructive. And you don't have to agree. But... No, there is. There is. But you don't got to jump on a fascist trying to protect their strong man in order to make those points, because all you're doing is legitimizing and giving left approval credence to them. Same thing uh, Donald Trump did back in um, uh, uh, 2015, by the way, talked about how the DNC was screwing over Bernie. That wasn't him. You know, and some lefties bought this. That of, wasn't him of course sincerely not. <laughs> criticizing the corruption of the DNC. That was him, you know, uh, trying to, you know, uh, 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 get a bite of lefty legitimacy as a maverick who could but criticize I, I love that example, Pausch, because the man won. <laughs> <laughs> the man yeah. became president of the United States of America because that message resonated rightly or wrongly, bad faith or good. So if if And if has some... he addressed corruption in the political No, but I'm not Donald Trump. It's the reverse situation, Vash. It's me saying to a conservative audience, hey, there is some legitimacy. Yes, I believe there's some legitimacy to your concerns here. Just like we opened this conversation talking about- No, there about... isn't, because their concern minute, is that Donald Trump like, is being targeted. Just like we opened this conversation talking about how there's legitimacy to all of these, a lot of these men who have moved to the right because they feel like the social contract has failed them. They don't have a place in society anymore. They have leaned into a kind of misogyny because they don't have traditional gender roles to conform to and feel lost and lonely. I don't think the misogyny is okay. I don't think Andrew Tate is okay. I don't think rape is okay. I don't think any of that is okay. But, I don't but there's an underlying there there. I don't open that discourse by looking at Andrew Tate going on about how he thinks society has failed men because you can't rape women for free anymore and go, hey, he's right on this. Not about all of it, mind you, but he is correct in that society has failed men. Well, and you I don't, take it from there. I don't what, know what, what you're doing. I, I wait agree a you have stay, to reach these stay there, people where they are. Stay, you stay can't there. Take their bad faith message and stay, go. Stay there. Ah. Stay there for a second. Stay there. I don't know what Andrew Tate has said. I've never like listened to Andrew Tate speaking. I got but in the ballpark. But, but if Andrew Tate. He said, uh, oh, did you, did I hate you too? I'm sorry. What are you mad? And I choked you a little bit. He said a lot of crazy shit. He's admitted to like stealing his, his, uh, cam girl's money through lying about tax. I mean, the dude's, the dude's a cyber pimp. He's an, he's an insane schizophrenic cyber pimp. Tate has said something like a. Well, I would say not insane schizophrenic, more of a con man, more of a con man cyber pimp sentence like i don't think there's a place for men in society anymore i think it's a hundred percent legitimate to say look i disagree with everything that andrew tate stands for i think that he is normalizing rape and violence against women and that's a pro that's disgusting and it's, he'll probably be criminally liable for it however of course it's true to your audience and then including people who are like 13 years old that there, there is a kind of a crisis of masculinity happening, and I think there are some interesting solutions over here on the left. Why don't you come join me and talk about them? But your I think solution that's is the same as Marjorie Taylor Greene's solution: abolish no. the FBI. I, I'm, I'm a little you're, confused, Vash, because you're doing her work for her. Right? I, I don't know how many times I can say this because I do you want, already... wait, Do you want to abolish the FBI or not? I, Brianna Joy Gray, think that that's a perfectly legitimate solution. One that, by the way, I could be. I could be moved on with people who are knowledgeable about what parts of the institution should stay in place, what pr preserve a, a certain function that I might agree is useful, et cetera. Because I claim to be no expert on the uh, the entire workings of the FBI hey, as an that, institution. That's, that's However, fine. It's complicated. But Vash, it, it almost doesn't matter because what I have said to you now repeatedly is that whatever version of FBI reform that you support, right? Because abolish the police, there's a whole lot of things in there that a lot of different people believe. Some people think, it's not really abolishment if you're replacing it with this other institution that you can call the police or not call the police, but has a very different function and different funding and different framing and all of those kinds of things. But the point is, this was an opportunity for substantial reform, whether or not you want it to be quote unquote abolished or not. It's not an and opportunity it was, for substantial wait, reform. And it was an opportunity for liberals, leftists, whomever in Congress who are elected to 
call Marjorie Taylor Greene's bluff and say this is actually populist legislation that protects vulnerable people against the overreaches of the government. This is what you're purporting to want. And if you actually believe in it, sign on to this legislation. Wait, wait, we, and when we gotta, she doesn't, we gotta, we, we gotta what, get to wait, the heart of this. No, no, and when we, we, she please, doesn't, please, please, please. I, I'm like six words away okay, from the okay, end of this all right, sentence. Okay, you're six. Okay, we're at the end. Okay, we're at the goal. And when she doesn't, that's the opportunity to call her bluff. Okay, you can't call their bluff. We've been doing this for decades. We the literally haven't. The Republican, no, you will. The Democrats have. That's how easy it no, is. No, they haven't. No, they have been. Because the Republicans will talk about any manner of emboldening or empowering the American people or helping the American people get more change in their pockets or lowering taxes or anything. And every single time the Democrats do anything that would objectively improve the lives of the working class, the Republicans go, ah, this is woke and don't pass it. Oh, any climate change reform? Ah, that's woke. Anything having to do with green energy? Ah, that's woke. Anything having to do with like uh, unions or healthcare or anything, ah, that's woke, toss it out. There is no calling their bluff because while they may say they care about the FBI exercising power over the week, internally they have a consistent message, was they want power and they want to kill you. Uh, you, of course, being whatever marginalized group is on the table these days, probably not me. Um, the the so, idea yeah, that you can I think call that you're wrong bluff. about that, but I'll, I'll no, just put, put it in that. Let you finish. Go you, ahead. You can't call their bluff on this. It doesn't serve any point. The only thing you're doing is listening to a fascist trying to embolden her political strategy for removing democracy and all the barriers that prevent her from doing so, and going, ah, yes, I think that she's right on this point, and then you propose a solution identical to hers, and wait, then the wait, 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 and then the, the solution reform is not identical wait, to hers. Wait, How wait, many wait, times are you going to say that straw wait, wait, man, wait, 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 no, I'm caveat, you, now we're interrupting both ways. And the reform version, the more let's introduce the discourse here, you still frame as addressing some of Republicans' legitimate concerns. They it have is. none. They have none. The Republicans are uniformly against any kind of power being taken away from authoritative institutions. They will back anything that can be done to empower the police, anything that can be done to empower the FBI, That's the DOJ, true. or the CIA. I'm sorry, it's not true. As long as they're in charge. And so, when they have the power to take over those things, you've got to jump did, on a fascist trying happened? to protect their strong Wait, man in order to make ah, those points. Because ah, all you're doing- Oh, I played a different video. She did not like the finger. Look at her eye. Look at her this, eye. Anything that can be done to empower the FBI, That's the DOJ, true. or the CIA. I'm sorry, as it's not long true. As their. Oh, oh, she did not like the finger. She did not like the finger at all. In charge. And so, when they have the power to take over those institutions, like Donald Trump tried to by firing Mueller or firing the directors and putting his own cronies in charge, the way um, the DOJ, I forget it's with Barr, tried to get. What is this? I'm once again asking for your help and get me unbanned from YouTube. As you know, a group of anti-Semitic trolls was from my channel, resulting in its immediate deletion. What I see is the content info of anyone on the creators. Please DM me if you can for help. Unban him, guys. He was unfairly mass reported. Huh. Crazy Destiny makes that tweet after everything. Hmm. Get sedition charges being brought to uh, Black Lives Matter protesters. They don't give a shit about federal power being used to cripple the little guy, as long as they're the ones doing it. And all we're doing is giving legitimacy to their lie when we pretend they have any motivations other than the raw accumulation of power. There are plenty of things the Republicans could have done to indicate they actually care about taking power away from corrupt institutions. They have done zero of these, none, zilch nada. They don't do it and they don't care. So I said this at the beginning and I would just like to say this again. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I, we don't have to keep going back to this point. There is a difference between Republican voters, regular conservative people to whom these arguments appeal and elected conservatives. There's no need to debate what elected conservatives in a position of power, what their investments in in preserving their own power. Everybody agrees about this. Just like we don't have to go round and round and round about whether or not a Marjorie Taylor Greene was a good faith or bad faith actor. As I said repeatedly in my radar, despite you and your response to my radar, accusing me of being credulous and taking her at face value, I, I don't know how many times I can say it. This isn't about Marjorie Taylor Greene. This isn't about convincing elected Republicans. This isn't about any of that. Voters it's about the, it's the It's the fact that regular people on the ground feel differently about this. And I'm sorry, like this is maybe just a difference of opinion, but my interactions with and real world understanding of the political smorgasbord that is 
the 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 political diversity of this country and the random groups of beliefs that end up in any one given person who then identifies as conservative or liberal or somewhere in between it's just not that neat and it's not that clean i think i think there there needs to be a distinction here when we're talking about the republican voter or the moderate centrist voter, right? We're talking about the Republican voter here, not elected Republicans. There is a big difference between, say, a uh, somebody who votes for Mitch McConnell and Mitch McConnell. When you talk to them about marijuana legalization, for example, you're going to get a very different response from Mitch McConnell than you would for necessarily the average Mitch McConnell voter. Not saying that all of Mitch McConnell voters support legalizing marijuana, but you're more likely to hear that type of support from a Republican voter in his district than you would to hear from him. And so I, I do think there, there's some credence to the idea that we do need to communicate and talk to those people and drag them over to our ideas. But I, I agree with, with Vosh's uh, statement that Marjorie Taylor Greene does not care about this at all. That is not her interest. She does not care about making these institutions stronger. She cares about just turning them in the other direction. That's that's her main interest because she only got this outrage and this this out there through QAnon nonsense. So literal delusion and Donald Trump uh, being uh, uh, having his house raided and being investigated. And we maybe we'll just disagree about this because we have different experiences in the world and of humanity. But I know for a fact that there are people who have a good faith interest in a lot of things, including a good faith concern about the IRS targeting working class people, which is a true thing that happens, even though I think that abolishing the IRS does in the same way that abolishing the FBI potentially could if there weren't other um, prongs of the Justice Department, et cetera, to hold Trump accountable, end up letting millionaires and billionaires off the hook from getting audited and taxed at all, right? So I, I, I think that people, even though conservatives are weaponizing this IRS thing to try to, yes, insulate rich people from getting audits, it's good to say, hey, I hear you when you say you're concerned that the IRS has historically targeted the poor. I hear you when you say that this is a legitimate concern, and it is a legitimate concern. But if you don't meet people there, if you don't acknowledge that there's a core of something there, they have no reason to trust you politically. And maybe your interest isn't in convincing people and changing anybody's mind. And maybe my political project and trying to do so is ultimately a futile one. But I can't see that. I, I do not believe that there's more utility sitting on the sitting sitting in these media spaces talking endlessly about what can't be done while the world burns because a lot of people can't afford to extend the status quo in this way and some of us want to just try things and throw things at the wall and see what sticks and you said i'm sorry the one last point of what you said just really quickly you said the Damn. offering again you keep saying the same thing as marjorie taylor green i don't care what you put in this legislation but you cannot you 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 argue that the the left calls uh, or liberals, whatever, the broad left calls Republicans on their shit all the time. It literally doesn't happen because Democrats never put forward clean bills advocating for populist policies. They never do it. We saw this happen with the $15 minimum wage where it was part of a must pass bill. Democrats intentionally took it out so that it could be killed. It was it was a 51 bill, right? It was part of the, the COVID reconciliation package. Schumer took it out, didn't have to but took it out on the advice of the parliamentarian, which is advisory. So then it was subject to a 50, a 60 vote margin and could be voted down by Marjorie Taylor Greene and, um, sorry, I'm uh, sorry, not Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, right? Over and over again, they will never have a standalone bill on things that they know are overwhelmingly popular and they'll make them look bad. They just won't. They'll, they'll, they bifurcated the bill pack better. They do this over and over again. So we never get these clean demonstrations of Republicans are against X, Y, Z. Look at, look at how Bernie has to run around defending that he voted down the crime, he voted for the crime bill because it had the Violence Against Women's Act in Women's it. Act that's, should, yeah. that's what they do, in fact. That's what Democrats always do to provide cover for the fact that they are not actually a populist or worker-centered party in the least. And they actually want substantially the same kinds of economic policy that the Republicans want. They just wanted to be a little bit nicer to the gays and the blacks and the immigrants. Kind not, of. Not substantially the same when Republicans... I mean, I would really, I would heavily disagree with that. When you look at the amount of investment that Biden has done in infrastructure, the largest infrastructure bill, and I don't know how long, 60, 50, I don't know how long it's been, or the uh, the other types of legislation that he's trying to get through and has been able to get through and get done with a 50-50 Senate, it is substantially different than what Trump would have done while he was in office. The the amounts of investments, the, the where that money is going to, where the cuts are made, there are significant 
significant differences and those significant differences do affect people's daily livelihoods and how and how well their uh, their standard of living is and i think the more we try to say they're the same we downplay those differences in people's daily lived experience depending upon what administration is in power not just federally but locally as well because again all politics starts local local politics affects your daily life usually more than federal politics and so while while there are things where they're similar on and they agree on that they shouldn't and i agree with that let's not try to pretend they're the same party whatsoever republicans are calling for the abolition of the irs but i do agree that they're closer to the middle than a lot of like they're both liberal right they're both liberal parties that would be the main thing that i think i would say like like ties them together liberal in the idea that they believe in liberal democracy broadly well some of them do i, I would i would assume in the republican party uh when you get to the marjorie taylor greens and the carrie lakes and you know those types I'm, I'm a little less certain people want to acknowledge i'm not making an argument for the efficacy of the democratic party here i'm only saying that you can take a pretty clean look at what the republicans or you know mcconnell failed to table or what they've shot down in the uh, in the senate or the house or whatever it's pretty obvious that republicans just in terms of their policy prescriptions once they get in office are evil and want bad things uh, you know, that sounds like a sort of childlike simplicity, but it's actually the God's honest truth. Fake complexity is as misleading as fake simplicity. They will vote against things that are objectively good for the American people over and over and over again. It doesn't seem to affect their uh, their um, their voters' opinions of them that much. Now, I believe you can pull people over, by the way. You said you want to, you know, build a project and reaching out to people and that the complex variety of their positions make a make a more, uh, uh, you know, unique and uh, fractured. Uh, voter than what might be seen just by how people vote. And I agree with that. People are very complicated. The issue I have is that there's a critical difference between uh, the situations we're talking about here. When it comes to the concerns of a voter, reaching out to them, taking their bad idea, like abolishing the IRS and saying, hey, listen, buddy. I don't think it's a bad idea, but if you want to, if you want to okay, call it well, not well, abolishing the IRS, if you want to call it reforming the IRS, can we please just stick with that? If you think that, because because it's not the same wait, thing. Wait, 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 wait. I, I got to, wait, I got to. Who is this woman? This is Brianna Joy Gray. Got to finish. Go oh, wait, abolishing the IRS would absolutely be a bad idea. We have no systems in place. I'm sorry, right I'm sorry. I thought. Yeah, yes, I also agree with that. Abolishing the IRS is a terrible idea. Honestly, the IRS should be getting more funding, which is, I don't know if that's a hot take, but the IRS is like one of the few government institutions that if we give more money, we just rake in more money. It's like one of the just net plus like to our to our economy to our surplus to our to our government just a government program that we pour money into we get more money out of because of the amount it could deal with tax dodgers and actually like rake in the rake in the dough i like we want our federal institutions to work well the irs is understaffed and a lot of the money that we did give to the irs and the recompat recompat the majority of it was actually just for replacing retiring agents we did hire new agents but we needed to hire new agents we're still talking about the FBI. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. no, no, sorry. The, the, the FBI, right, my but apologies. also the, more so the IRS. Okay, the IRS. Whew, yeah, no, it's, okay. But anyway, you know, you take a Republican who wants to abolish the IRS. I think you can walk up to them. I think you can go, you know, okay, listen, I got you. I got you, buddy. Okay, but we got to talk about this, you know, spin it off in some way. I think that's okay. The issue I have is who you do it to on what specific issues and how you sell it. MTG, I think, is a no-go. I wouldn't agree with her on literally anything that she said, did, or believed that I thought benefited her agenda. Because her agenda is oblivious. It's well, you agree with her on one thing. I. You agree with her about being anti-force the vote. Um, I mean, we both drink water, I guess. Sure. Wait, was she? Oh, that's right. That's right. Because, she, yeah, she was one of the people who was consistent. About, yeah. Um, yeah, so we got water, sky is blue, and that. And, but, don't you, uh, but, but here, white, wait, wait a minute, but why well, is it wait, that it's like water sky finish. is blue when, when it's something like that? But to me, obviously wanting to dramatically limit the powers of an arm of the police state is a no-brainer consideration. The fact that me and Marjorie Taylor Greene are both in interested in curbing government power is... She's not. She's not. The co she's, she's keep doing, no, she's no, saying... No, okay, no, she, uh, okay she's fine, saying, let me rephrase. Doing that, let me keep rephrase. doing that. Let me rephrase. That she's saying she's interested in curbing government power is an opportunity for, like, I don't understand why you think that our, it's like you're you're talking as though MTG has the ability to write whatever legislation Democrats put forward. That's the opposite of what I'm saying. If she wants to open this broad category of FBI reform, if she wants to open that Pandora's box, she's able to do so, frankly, because she knows that the Democrats are too feckless to actually 
call her bluff and do anything about it. The, nobody the cares. World was the the FBI, only... Nobody cares about the FBI. Well, you don't maybe care about the, the, the... No, no, no. You don't average, care about the, the, the FBI. About... No, no, no. The average American does not care about it. It's not like a key voters issue. Police reform is way more up there. And even that just gets well, towered not, over by other But they're issues. not doing that either, Vouch. That's the whole point. That's what's so embarrassing about this whole fiasco, that we had the largest number of people in the streets in a protest movement in American history two years ago, to which the Democratic nominee responded, we need more funding for more cops. Yeah, I agree. He it's won the, we anyway. We live in a hell world. I completely but, agree. We're but all why dying. do we live in over. a hell world? Vouch, we why is there a, no we accountability? Live, we li Listen, I Th like Biden accountability. Biden did that, and you told we, people to go vote for Biden yes, without any and I'll condition. Do it again. Yes, because so, there are two candidates. My, please, please. Oh, my God. I just, this is what I've wanted the whole debate. I'm going to be honest. Most of this debate for me has been kind of snooze because they should be talking about whether swing states voted, whether she should have encouraged people to go vote for Biden. That's what we should be talking about right here. Yes. Who can win? And one is worse than the other. But there are two states, let, let the FBI, this. there are two states the FBI can exist in right L now. Let me ask just, you this. Wait, 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 please. There are only two states in which it can exist right now as represented by the interests of people currently in power. That's and not that true. Is, you gotta that let him finish. Is, wait, can you, who is fronting a public, uh, 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 like, support for FBI reform. Nobody, that that's my out. point. Then, that's then my that's point. It. Then listen to what Gosh, I'm that's the problem. She's got to stop talking and let him finish because he, he, he was trying to talk about the two states that the FBI can exist right now under Trump versus Biden. Bring it back to the Biden. That's what I need him to talk about right now. Please bring it to Biden. Please. But that's wait, the very out, problem. So wait, so, so you're agreeing with me then. Based on who is currently in power, there are two possible things no. that we can do with the FBI. No, no I'm not no, agreeing wait, with wait, you. Stop, wait, stop. You just I'm agreed with me. I'm you advocating. Just no, with me. no, I'm just not. With me. No, you're I didn't. You're advocating for no, changing I didn't. that situation. No, I didn't. Exactly. You're advocating for I'm advocating right. for a so, third opportunity, so, a third right. option. So in That's order my to job. Get, so if to get that option, you have to change the current situation, that would imply that an unchanged situation, aka what we exist in now is one with two options as represented by the interests of people. No, there, there is, there is if, uh, by that definition, there's only one option because there was only one party advocating anything, which is Marjorie Taylor Greene. So by, by your, by your metric, there's the only one thing out there. An option. Fine. So then that's it. We have so, that and we have this. No, Vash, this is so ridiculous. No, you can change wait a minute, it. Wait a minute, you can wait a get minute. three, but right now there are two. No. You agree with me. No. Right now there okay. are two. You can fight for Vash, three. Right. who cares? I am fighting for three, and you're convincing people to take one of two options because you're no, no, too no, 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 afraid no, no. No, please, please, to advocate please. for anything in this there. world that's We're real. We're almost there. You are tying so option. You are tying option number three to the insane bad faith fascist. No, I'm Why? not. No, 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 I'm not. no, 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 me, G, G. Okay, Alex. He's like looking directly into the camera. He's got his hand on the mic. He's like, come on, let me get the No, 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 we have the MAGA group and we have Democrats and moderates broadly. The MAGA group are composed entirely of fascists and people who want to abolish our democracy. And the moderate leaning Republicans, the moderates and the Democrats are some neutral flavor of law and order to maybe mild reform of the police. Why would you hinge any reform of the FBI to the fascists and not to the legitimate concerns of people who are arguing against police brutality? If you wanted to reach out to people who want to reform the FBI, don't reach out to MAGA voters, reach out to liberals. They were the ones out there on the streets protesting against police brutality, ineffectively, I might add, because we live in a hell world. But if you're going to tie FBI reform to some kind of optical or political front or movement, why would you do it to the worst people with the worst intentions rather than the le not worst people with the not worst intentions? This is the issue that I have. We, our power is in our voice. Our legitimacy conveys strength to- Damn, this is the strong, it took, it took 53 minutes, but this is the strongest Vosh has performed so far. He's, he's finally getting the point across, I think. He's, we finally reached, reached the, the tip of the mountain. Broader public fronts. Marjorie Taylor Greene runs this train. Not you, we're Donald Trump technically does. So you does. can She's use the words conductor. like hinge and tie and do what you want. But I think most people and understand- And articles like and and two. I think that most people understand uh, that my audience has no cognitive difficulty in processing well, exploiting. Well, okay, sorry, that that would be mean. No, never mind. A opportunity rhetorically in all the political audiences field. have cognitive difficulties. Uh, trust me, I have one. We've all my seen. audience gets it. My audience, there's nobody who didn't already uh, have a hubris. bad faith. 
there's nobody in my audience who didn't already have a bad faith perspective of me who's gotten a lot of clicks and views out of calling me every name in the book and criticizing every word out of my mouth, frankly, unless you already had an inclination to think the worst of me. Nobody who heard me say, Marjorie Taylor Greene is an utter fool, but she's opened the door to something that is legitimate, which is that the FBI needs to be abolished. Let's say substantive reform, since that's a sticking point for you and she we disagree not. on that issue. This and is, that this, this is, is like, what, this is Jesus like saying, Christ, dude, come on, it's, it's let like me saying just finish that, this No, sentence. it's like saying the Nazis opened the door to anarchism because they abolished the Wehrmacht government, you know? It, or sorry, the Do you the, think it's the, appropriate the to government. continually co con 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 compare Marjorie Taylor Greene, one elected representative of the United States of America, to the Nazi regime that killed six million plus Jews and what, however many tens of yes, millions of Russians. Absolutely, and the fact that you don't think that's appropriate is insane to me. Like, okay, okay, it's gonna get vicious. Let's see it. Let's see it, Vosh. Let's see it. See, I I restrain myself always from trying to like say this person's a Nazi. I would say that Marjorie, like I always restrain myself from that unless I'm very confident. Like this person's like literally, I will kill all the Jews. Like, I, I am, I'm very restrained in this. Let's see how Vosh does. Okay, risky strategy from Vosh here. Let's see what he's gonna do. He just pulled out the Chad Yes card. Let's see how he's gonna perform. Genuinely on uh, Okay, fascists, I think that's pretty disrespectful fascists, to millions of dead no, okay. people and, and real life consequences, but we don't yes, have to go down that it's road. It's I think tragic, it's, look, I'm sure. No, I, I think it's a rhetorical- you'll just, you'll just drop a shoe no, at the door and Vosh, then leave it. It's I, I think it's rhetorically, I think it's, there's a reason why Goodwin's Law is what it is. It's, it's rhetorically, I think we I, I generally I try to not do Holocaust comparisons or or Nazi comparisons generally unless it's like a very direct comparison which honestly Vosh could just like get in the trenches and try to go into those direct comparisons with like what Marjorie Taylor Greene has said about Jews if he wanted to but it's probably not best to hit, uh, hinge long on this weak to constantly have to shoehorn Nazis into every argument to make your point it's I don't think that either of us needs to do that they're fascists it's a perfectly but, valid like, comparison I, I just, especially since in this case Marjorie Taylor, this Green, Marjorie Taylor Greene also wants to abolish a federal institution that she's just using as a bulwark to achieve power but other people might misinterpret 85% of what the FBI has done is to crush people people like me, people who are black, people who are black, people who are coming. But I she know that she care. doesn't care, Vash. Why do you keep saying that care. to me? I know then she doesn't care. Then why do you care. keep bringing it wait up? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know she doesn't care. Historically, the Weimar Republic had done so many bad things. Do you think that made it more justifiable when the Nazis said they? Well, what is? Where does that eighty-five percent number come from? Do you guys know where that eighty-five percent number comes from? Eighty-five percent of what the FBI do is is go after people who are are left wing or black. What does that even mean? Like. As in, like, because they're going to be people who are black who are committing federal crimes who get arrested. Like, what does that even mean? Like, 85% as in, if you were to take all of the, like, monitoring of left-wing groups and all of that activity, and you would combine it with the improper, uh, like, cases against black people would be 85% of their activity? That'd be, like, a wild number. Even, even if we were to expand that to say... All black people going after black people and left wingers is eighty five percent of the of the FBI's activity right now. I I would even say like that doesn't seem real. Is that real? Like, I would like to see the numbers for that. Like I just don't know where this eighty five percent number came from. Is this like an old number from like the fifties? Is this like a now number? Like I just don't know where that number comes from. They wanted to abolish it in favor of putting <sighs> okay. Hitler as the so emperor. So the, the argument is... No, wait, can left... you answer that? The Weimar if... Republic had done, like, mostly bad things. It was a government in the ar The Europe argument is that if the, the left... Early... 20th century if the argument is that if the left wants to i'm googling it, it right now i'm googling the 85 percent fbi 88 5 percent left fbi left wing nothing is coming up so i just don't know where this is the left want if the sorry if the right wants to make a claim like the police are bad this is this is what was happening at the moment after years of criticizing the left and calling everybody antifa and flying blue lives matter flags between 1-6 in this moment, there has been a really interesting shift and in realignment inside the, Re the Republican Party. They're all still pro-law and order. They're not. They are. They all, if you take a look at what motivates Republican voters and which candidates tend to win in the midterms, uh, law and so order rhetoric cracking down on the BLM protesters, all, Antifa. They're not all still law and order. No, they're I'm not anti making, wait a minute, the wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Be clear, Marjorie Taylor Greene is releasing like 
statements right now saying we need to declare Burns antifa a terrorist organization and man. what organizations would be involved in investing that investigating them if they are then declared a terrorist organization which not only could be abused horribly but it would be federal organizations the same organization she's lambasting right now by the way that, that's why it doesn't feel like there's any principle radical ac thank you so much for the prime being sub for 10 months i am not making a claim that now all republicans hate the police I'm not making the claims that 90% of the Republicans hate the police. I'm not saying no such thing. What I'm arguing is that there is a new vulnerability in their arguments. There's a new subtlety to these arguments where for the first time, in a, perhaps a long time, Republicans can imagine a world in which they are oppositional to the police. It's not just a consequence of 1-6. I don't know if you watched that Andrew Gillen whatever uh, Callahan 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 um, documentary there are all of these interesting moments that are burbling up and Marjorie Taylor Greene saying this thing about the FBI was in in some ways like a, the highest profile crack and what has been a very formidable defense or alignment I should say of Republicans in the police since time immemorial it seems now you can say that it's not a real thing it's a superficial crack it's not a real thing it doesn't it doesn't matter my and I understand that you disagree with this but my perspective is it's worth chipping away at that and see how far we can go. Let's chip away at them and either force them to double down and go back to saying they love the police and that's fine, whatever, no, no love lost, or create opportunities. If they're gonna tell their audiences, if they're gonna speak to the average conservative voter and say, actually the police aren't always good. Oh, actually maybe we shouldn't, we should have we shouldn't have qualified immunity. Maybe police, people sh police members should be held accountable too because sometimes no, they go delusional. after people that I like. How is it delusional? Even Donald Trump, there have been a, there's been a conservative push to end qualified immunity for years. They That's like a only, real thing. They are only after power if it's in their way. There is no institutional of of support for broad true. police reform. If I will say, like, if there was like legislation put forward that Republicans would support that would actually help deal with the issue of qualified immunity, then yes, I would support it. But I don't see that happening, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. And the most like movements you're going to see on that are from the Democratic Party. Of the course, current, that's true. The current, conservative, but we're... the current conservative darlings are Trump, who said that we should suspend the Constitution, and DeSantis, who is currently constructing his own little Oceania down there in Florida. The current leading his own Oceania. Okay, okay, I'll give him that one. I have to give him that one. Conservative constitutional That's interpretation funny. theory is one where they essentially abolish originalism and go in favor of what, like, a kind of paternalistic Christian nationalism. They are purely authoritarian in every element of their political advocacy, and co coincidentally, the only time they seem to have a problem with power is when it's in their way. Why would you? Why would you? ever give this any weight or credence what's so why crazy pretend, about why pretend it's a crack it's not a crack they're a unified wall what's it's crazy a is that like literally in my radar like every time i talk about these things i'll say exactly that and you don't hear it like it's like There's you don't no want to hear it it's a steel block I'll, I'll, I'll say hey audience this is a principle whether it's free speech or limiting government power and you believe in it now the people that you like on the right who are talking about these things they're saying they believe in those things but they're not really good faith actors. They're just trying to protect their own. I just did a radar like this about the IRS. So if you genuinely believe in these principles, like the poor shouldn't be targeted by the IRS, here's alternative policy. For example, part of Bernie Sanders' um, wealth tax was to have a 30%, I think, quota for millionaires and billionaires getting taxed to try to correct for how disproportionately poor people are getting or audited, not taxed, right? So you, you, you meet them where they are, you say, I understand why these things appeal to you. They're not actually going to do those things to help I think you. That's great. So then you pivot. That's all this is. And look, at the end of that's the day, good. We... Wait, that was good. That was I, I have no problem. But Vash, at all that's with what literally you what my radar was. But you have a hang up about Marjorie Taylor Greene, and that's fine. You obviously think that she is more dangerous and more. Fascist. I don't like fascists. That's true. That that's the lefty fine. principle of mine. Look, that's literally that's fine. Uh, wait, BJG, that is you've literally hit the issue. If everything that you had said was here is an issue Republicans are concerned about. I don't think they're coming at it from a right angle. Here's the that's, right angle. If that, Vash, no, 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 that's no, literally that, what I but, said. But, the radar. We'll, nope. we'll play the radar right here, by the way, in the podcast so everybody can see word for word. Marjorie Taylor Greene has become America's favorite broken clock. But look at the, but look at the title. Marjorie Taylor Greene is right. Oh, whatever. And it's that time of day where she's. You're, you're saying she's whatever. Regretfully, 100% right. Now, I don't take her critique in good faith. I don't expect her to keep this up when a candidate of her liking is in control of the deep state. But you should. Her hypocrisy doesn't have to be the hypocrisy of the average conservative voter. I said.
that's not too bad of a position gotta be honest it's not that bad not that bad, but she should have changed the title. Like the title's garbage. And Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene is a bad faith actor. They don't really mean this. They're only doing this to protect Trump. However, this is what the left should be doing. And, and the yet, fact that I say that fast and, and you yet, still hit me with all these the, bad face attacks. The criticism, and by the way, you the, didn't just wait, call Marjorie Taylor Greene a fascist. You call me a fascist. A fascist enabler at times. We'll get to your Ukraine takes, I'm sure. It's not about the- God, I want to watch that so bad. Core of the oh argument you think laid out to me. Do you think that's- useful i mean do you honest if you honestly think i'm a fascist enabler and someone who wants to murder you to ukrainian children the last why would one you, was a joke wait a the minute first one but wait a minute why would you agree to come on rising and look me in the face and 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 be friendly and nice and act like all is well in the world what? if you really have those if you really have that level of antagonism toward me if you really think that i'm as bad a person as you tell your audience repeatedly <laughs> then why even agree to come on rising in the first place first of all a couple of things I've sat face to face with Charlie Kirk, you know, he's so have I. Right. OK, I talked civilly with him. I don't have any qualms about that. Second of all, I say mean things about a lot of people. It's genuinely just. Uh, but why, uh, Vash? Because I've been accused because, of being a grifter. I I've been accused of ginning up, ridiculous. you know, fighting Whoa. over force. Of stuff, but I Look at that. Stardust is raiding me. She sent me 33 people as I watch the 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 finishing moments of this debate, 14 minutes left. I appreciate the 33 drama whores who have come over from Star's channel. Welcome on in. This is the debate, it's drama-ish. Hope you enjoy. Uh, but I'm mostly a foreign policy channel. If that interests you in any way, please do subscribe. Going back to Ukraine very soon. And thank you, Couchman, for the 200 biddies. I appreciate that. Any dubs, subs, any, I said dubs and subs. Any donations, subs, going to my site chat, dylanburns.tv subbing donating all of that money is going to go back to my fund where which i'm going to use to go back to ukraine any money is appreciated and thank you star for the raid i don't i don't take personal attacks at people i don't do response videos to try to create beef in fact i'm inviting you here today in part because I, i've ignored you i've chosen not to engage it doesn't seem constructive but like because you were so you know frankly kind of polite and humble on rising i thought there might be one second, what's this? And for, I will debate Keffels. The topic will be whether or not Stalin is guilty of said crimes. I don't know what the crime is, but he's probably guilty of it. Join the Discord and type show request channel and a time will be arranged. Infrared, I will not debate you unless you follow the following conditions. You unblock me. You follow back Umfis for life. Do 80 push-ups and have a fruit basket delivered to my house. Oh my god. Well, we'll see. I think he'll he'll do everything except for the fruit basket. Everything but the fruit basket. Be a genuine opportunity for us to have a meeting of the minds at the very well, least. But then you, right... you make a joke like the one you just made, and it makes me feel like this was a, a fool's errand. No, what we're having right now isn't a breakdown in communication. It's an aesthetic difference in how we approach what we do. Well, I, I gotta you tell you, human, background... human to well... human, I don't feel it like it's an aesthetic difference. It feels degrading and unconstructive in a space that actually means a lot to me because I think the project that we're- It's very hard for, and this is the problem with this type of rhetoric, the same reason I don't like when Destiny uses the word subhuman, the same reason why I don't like when Vosh uses it. Because even if she, he just said, this is stupid, she's stupid. Like no one, like no one be like, okay, well, who really cares? But when you call her subhuman, right? Anybody who's normal and unattached to the website, to the internet is gonna hear that and they're gonna be like, subhuman? Oh, that's the, that's like the thing I heard like, that's the, like, that's the stuff I hear, like, that's a word I hear from, like, racists and, like, bigots and, like, what, what, why do you use the word subhuman, you know, ugh. That's, that's immediately the read any normal person is going to take from that. Like, whether or not you want to, want that to be what's taken or not. Um, and it's probably just not a good insult to use. We were ostensibly both involved, both involved in is an incredibly important one. This isn't, like... I'm not trying to be like famous on the internet from talking about po politics. I well, we only became be a jerk. Well, no, I was an attorney with a very good salary that didn't need any of this, to be honest. So I'm here because my passion for these issues drove me to start freelancing. I ended up getting a full-time position and I ended up getting plucked by the Bernie campaign to be a part of this. That's that's why I'm here. And yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to grant like I'm not trying to grandstand to say that, but like I'm just gonna be honest about emotionally, it feels very frustrating to feel like you're trying to do something constructive i'm open to criticism i'm i'm open to saying this is a different suggestion we can go this way and that way 
you don't like force the vote. Okay, so Rhoda had these other asks that was so constructive. We grew, we developed, we moved forward. But it seems to me that your position, that your desire is to like, coin winners or losers, dub winners or losers, good people or bad people, grif grifters and not grifters, fakes or, or legitimate folks. And that seems to be ultimately very destructive to me to this broader project that I think that we, sh we, we share, no? We definitely share it to an extent. And I don't think that, I mean, there's obviously a huge overlap in the stuff that we actually do believe. I do genuinely believe that a lot of this is an aesthetic difference. If I was feeling cynical, I would accuse you of engaging in a kind of civility politic here, right? I mean, there were plenty of like sincere, well-minded political activists back in the 1980s who would have shown up in leather strap or like punk mohawks. Well, or that whatever. wouldn't bother they me. They might have. Well, and they cursing might have been doesn't mean. bother me. That like that doesn't they might bother have been me. Mean too, right? Like oh. either you either you really think you believe that narrative that I am indifferent to the interests of Ukrainian children, or you don't. Like which is it? Don't bring it up as like a joke. Do you think that I am happy I, that I laugh at genocide and think it's ha it's great for Ukrainian children to be killed? Is that something that you think? Then let's talk it out. But don't bring it up as a joke. I wasn't under the impression that particular bit would get to you so much. But if you want my sincere it's opinion, not about it getting to me, Vouch. It's, it's well, real it, well, life. That, that's fine. Wait, wait, that, I'm not insulting. I, I don't wait, 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 think I'm that sorry. Ukrainian children wait, being dead is a joke, in fact. That, that would, wait, I'm sorry. I mean, I got to be honest. It read, it read like she wasn't taking it too seriously, though, and like these weapons is what will help push the Russians out who are doing the murdering. And she had no, like no urgency at all in, in sending Ukraine what is necessary to either have leverage so they can get what's necessary in negotiations or to push the Russians out. So it, it, it felt like you weren't taking the situation seriously enough that you wanted to do anything about it. Just seriously enough to like, I don't know. I don't think she laughed at it. I think she was laughing at the person bringing it up, but it came off wrong. It didn't come off good. Um, and it, and it's just like, I think her politics on it were just bad, just like bad, just bad politically. There's a reason why she got such a negative response. She thinks it's because she's like truth telling. I think it's because everybody kind of read it, read that because it was bad. It, it came off bad. Felt like you were uninterested in doing anything about it. It, it just wasn't a good performance. I wasn't trying to be insincere there. When I said got to you, I wasn't trying to epically own you by indicating you're emotionally involved in the stuff you talk about. I am too. Um, the sincere, actual, non-joking, fully straightforward position that I have on that debate that you had was that I only saw the damn clip. But I do know that a lot of lefties uh, and people adjacent to lefties even, not just lefties, have attitudes on the Ukraine war that I consider to be outright fascist apologia. I don't think that makes them irredeemable people or that, that I shouldn't speak to them or that they're bad people fundamentally or that they're malicious or lying or anything, but I do care about these issues and it's a product of the fact that I care about these issues that I take the stances that I do. If I fly off the handle a little bit too much, I think that's a fine criticism, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, so having not, not you, you didn't actually watch the episode, you just saw the clip and you made it a pin. Did you, I don't actually know, did you do a response video on my position on Ukraine? Have, have I, saw it on, I saw it on stream. If it got turned into a video, that would have been my editors. I don't think I talked about that for more than like 30 seconds though. So I don't think I did a full thing. Okay. I, I could just, be wrong on that. Do you think it's responsible? Like maybe, maybe it's fine. Like I can't believe everyone makes clips about me. For all that I'm called a grifter, it seems that I'm fueling the media e ecosystem of YouTube with everybody making clips about my original content. Well, you know how much <laughs> people dislike me, right? So that's- Okay, can we watch the clip? And by the way, I, this clip was originally posted by her. She can say it was clip chimpy, but she was the one who posted this original clip. Let's take a quick look at it. Stealing Ukrainian children, 500 just yeah. yesterday were shipped to Russia. The, the kidnapping of Ukrainian children from orphanages um, is actually really horrific. And they ship them all across Russia. And that's on top of the large scale art theft that has been engaged in where over 15,000 artistic, uh, or like historical pieces were taken, including like old Scythian gold and uh, culturally significant Ukrainian oil paintings. Like they, they, we're seeing some like really disgusting behavior that has very, that has basically zero strategic benefit and is being done because of their view of Ukrainians. Their, their, their negative view of Ukrainians that Dmitry Medyev, the former president of Russia and somebody who's been with Putin since the campaign trail um, and back in the early 2000s, uh, well, you know, as the 2000s were coming up, um, he called Ukraine this a disease of the mind. Like, that's the mentality the Russian state has towards ukraine and that's why they're treating them in this fashion. For them, these are their children, so they could do whatever they want with them, and that's what makes this so horrific.
And you and this is why we should be supporting them. We cannot allow this kind of evil to go unchecked just on a basic no. moral reason. I mean, don't you agree? That, that is the moment where people took very, very poorly to that. Most Ukrainians took very poorly to this because it was them hearing some horrific stuff being described, something they're going through on a, on a daily basis. And like, she's like, <laughs> like there are multiple children being stolen like a day. Like that's horrific. If, if I described that Native Americans being kidnapped and disappearing and stuff like that, and the response I got was like, <laughs> It's just it, people aren't going to read that well. And so there's a reason why she got such a negative response. And she can't be like, people clip me out of context because this is like the clip that went viral R right here. She she clipped it. Agree with that? I, I'm sorry, I don't. And here's okay, why. why. Why? There are gangs that have overtaken Haiti. There is a cholera pandemic that was started by the UN. UN members raped Haitians. A third of Pakistan was underwater. Should we go, due to, due to the climate crisis, should we go and invade China because Uyghurs are in concentration camps? So the thing is about globalism and doing something is you do what you can. For example, there are millions of homeless people in the United States. No one would propose that I go house every single one of them. No one, because it, everybody knows I can't. But if I can help house one or two or help them out in some way, it is a good thing for me to go out and do that. And while I'm trying to house somebody, if you came up to me, it's like, yeah, there's 20 homeless people on the there. That's not a togent criticism. You do what you can, right? And the United States can send military aid to Ukraine with zero NATO casualties, zero Amer Amer American military casualties. The Ukrainians want to fight. They're actively pushing back the Russians, liberating territory. They just liberated in Kherson, the only provincial capital the Russians have captured for the entire war. They liberated over 50% of the territory the Russians have captured since February 24th. They are winning. And you're the one saying, stop. Stop sending the aid. Stop them from winning as they actively want to fight the vast majority of Ukrainians, over 80 percent from publicly available polling data with large margin sizes, by the way, for the polling for the source data. They're not doing, oh, I'm polling 50 people. It's like thousands of people over 80 percent wanting to continue the struggle, continue the war. Don't make territorial concessions. Don't sign your neighbor's death warrant as we're uncovering mass graves like in Izium with over 440 bodies uncovered. Largest uh, mass graves uncovered since the Yugoslav genocides. And your response to that is, well, why, why not China and the concentration camps? Why not everywhere? Well, China, if you were to invade China, the world would have an actual direct confrontation between two nuclear powers armies directly. And that's not a military operation anybody really thinks we could successfully carry out. But the Ukrainians have exceeded expectations time and time again, and it comes with zero American military casualties to support them. So that's something that it can be successful because we've seen the Ukrainians become successful time and time again. And the Ukrainians actively want to continue the struggle. Nobody wants to invade China. Nobody is going to seriously suggest that, that could lead a, we could lead a liberation struggle of the Uyghurs by invading China, even though they should be let out of those facilities and those programs should be discontinued. That doesn't mean we can't do what we can to also help those people as well by sanctioning the direct officials as we have done of those involved in the camps with the Uyghurs. Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. And that is what Gia Brianna Joy Gray is doing here. Tell me, tell me, articulate. This is the question that I asked Matt Dust when this war first started. Until you can articulate to me what the rationale is behind where America intervenes and where it doesn't. If we were to invade China, the world could actually explode. The, re the odds of us, of the world exploding from us sending weapons to Ukraine are, are basically zero, uh, as, most, uh, as most analysts would agree with. Um, maybe the world wouldn't explode in a direct invasion of China because, again, these weapons are taken very seriously, but it, it just couldn't be successful. That's the difference. We can succeed here. We couldn't exceed an invasion in China, right? It's like, for example, if you're one cop and you see somebody on the side of the road trying to mug somebody there and you could stop them. And then on the other side, you see 30 gang members dealing crack with machine guns. You're probably going to deal with the first guy because you can deal with that. You can't deal with the other thing that you might have to come back and deal with later. You get what I'm saying? Do what you can. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. You go try to stop those guys, the 30 guys, you're just going to end up dead. Then nobody saved. 
consistent and give me some kind of moral accounting that makes me believe that it's actually about moral commitment and realizing how much of our money and our resources in the richest country in the world can go to anyway you get you get this is where the outrage came from that we don't need to watch the whole clip and then i reiterate my criticisms that are already publicly available on youtube i disagree with her heavily in that uh, in that video and i hope they get to that debate in and in and in another video that will be released in the future hopefully hopefully they talk about that in the future or they release the, the portion of they where the portion of the video where they talk about that on youtube so we can watch it that's a mutual thing right there people get real mad well, about I, me i i can't speak to what people say about you i have very consciously chosen and not to engage because I don't think that kind of thing is constructive. And if somebody who wouldn't uh, nor listening to me is listening to you and saying Medicare for all is a good idea at the end of the day, I'll I'll let sleeping dogs lie. That to me, that's a net benefit and I don't need to tear you down or talk about anybody else on the internet. That's not my business. Well, right, you but, don't do reactive content quite as much, right? If you're live streaming, of course, you go over all the clips and videos and arguments and right. of course that you I, see I'm not and you a, react to it. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, and I don't mean this, you know, we're in different spaces and it's fine to be an entertainer. That's it's fine. But like, that's not my niche. So all I would say to that is like, I think it would be useful and good and probably actually elevate your content. I mean, not to, that sounds patronizing. I don't mean it like that, but I think it would be useful and good to perhaps review everything in total, in context, to assume good faith of people. That's the ir irony of the name of my podcast is the whole point is that to, to try to engage legitimately and in good faith with all of these arguments, even with people I, I disagree. Um, and that means not taking an isolated clip or even within the clip, frankly, I think I make myself clear, but not taking an isolated clip and making content on it that causes people to make jokes or claims about me like I like and enjoy the death of Ukrainian children. That's all I would say. I, I, I really would like to see a substantive back and forth about why people took so poorly to that clip, because that's where I think the real discussion needs to be had here, because her opinion, her taking that uh, clip is basically is, well, if we have to, if we are willing to send aid to Ukraine, why can't we in, like invade China? Can't we use the same logic? It. Like, just functionally, it, it doesn't take long for anybody to, to break down why that doesn't make any sense. Um, just, like, functionally, why one would be possible and we could work on and another project, an invasion of China, is just, just physically impossible. Respect. I think that we're both culpable of this, even in this conversation to an extent. Like, you mentioning that I'd called you subhuman, or uh, you saying that it was disrespectful to the millions of dead that I might make a comparison to Nazi Germany. These are things that both of us do, intentionally or otherwise, to lower the opinion of the other in the eyes of our audience. Or I guess in, in this case, whoever is sympathetic to me who watches this content on your end, since I'm not live streaming. I don't think, look, I'm fine with banter and insults back and forth. I love that shit. Oftentimes, I feel like a hyperfixation on it's to the detriment of the conversation because people get all up in arms about who's being rude or to who. The ideals, obviously. All of this could have been avoided if he just never called her subhuman because all the other insults people could have gone over, like gotten over. That one, it, it most people can't. They don't hear that all the day. They hear stupid, you're fucking idiot. They hear that all the time. Not many people hear people call others subhuman all the time. That's in hindsight. It shouldn't have to be in hindsight, though. Maybe you just don't call anyone subhuman. I don't know for everyone to be polite but we both shouted we both made jabs at each other i think that's wonderful i don't, I don't, I don't think it's bad faith. shouting i don't i don't have an issue with any of that i think that look at worst i could be accused of vouch not um not understanding the existential harm that marjorie taylor greens and, and her politics present to the united states at worst you could say that i you know underestimate the potential harm that could come of me uh, saying that Marjorie Taylor Greene is right about this one narrow issue. And that's a perfectly legitimate criticism somebody can make. But you you know that you went a lot further than saying that. They, it's like, Fascist for the vast majority of people, like this is just like, they're gonna hear Vosh called her subhuman because of a political disagreement, which was, hey, she was fine with like giving Marjorie Taylor Greene credit on this. That's how people are gonna read it, and it doesn't come off well. Gia, yeah. Which I stand by. I think that you've engaged in it to an extent. Okay. It's fine. Who doesn't do that, right? I mean, the first well, principle of what? being a lefty is to hate other lefties. You know? I, I don't. I don't think that I do. And, and in criticism. fact, I think that the FBI is a is a fascist organization. If we want to use oh this kind damn of 
words. Um, and I could easily say that wanting to defend and protect the FBI. I think that Biden's a fascist. I, I talked to Cornell West about this at length. But Biden's then, a fat dude. Th these words mean nothing. I mean, I don't even know who Bosch was talking. She was enabling, I guess, MTG. But if we got into the point where like Joe Biden's a fascist, right? Well, then like we're, we're using the same word to describe like a neo-Nazi or like Bashar al-Assad, like a dictator and like milk toast liberal Joe Biden. Be a fascist apologist. Do it if you think. Then there's that. like, then there's like, it feels like we're just kind of like, just like wiping. Like these words mean nothing anymore because then, like, if that's the case, then the vast majority of Americans are fascists, and your left wing movements are dead anyway. Then you well, should because, have no problem calling me that, right? But I, I don't actually think that that's true, Vash, and I also don't spend my time attacking. I attack the powerful. I'm interested in attacking or not attacking, but in criticizing Joe Biden because he has the power to affect so many lives. I'm interested in attacking institutions because they have the power to oppress people. I'm not interested in arguing with podcasters. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the point. And I think that you serve a valuable role. I think a lot of people in this space who I've argued with and disagreed with serve a valuable role. People like Sam Cedar, people like Jimmy Dore, who I sometimes agree with and sometimes I don't. I don't spend my time. And, it, and it's frustrating, I got to say, when you exercise some restraint and don't spend all your time fighting with people for that to be characterized as having alliances and secret cabals of like, da -da -da, it's ridiculous. Well, like, I'm if, not making those criticisms. It, I it, usually it, criticize you for the stuff I think you've said or made points about. Um, I understand that, you know, the, the, the tribalism here can get out of order from time to time. We obviously differ different kinds of content, but I'm glad you understand at least that there's a direction to this. Criticizing people in power is fine and good, but sometimes bringing on some dipshit MAGA hat to argue with for two hours while calling him every possible word that won't get you banned from YouTube is legitimately a good way of moving over people from the right. It sounds stupid, but especially with the right, you know, oftentimes their allegiances have more to do with conveyed strength than actual arguments. So if you can make somebody look kind of funny and make a couple of good jokes, they'll take you more seriously. And so those what's the are difference attitudes. between that? Let me ask you, like, what's the difference between that and what I'm talking about with alluding to the fact that, oh, you like Marjorie Taylor Greene here? What about my what about my pet pet project over here on, on the left? Because there are people who've said after your rising appearance, you know, it's wrong to ask, you know, it's wrong to ask Falchon to talk about this because of the past statements he's made about women. You know, it's wrong. It's 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 inappropriate. It's hypocritical. Da, 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 da. Like you can you can you can make any argument that any person is inappropriate to allude to or to bring into a part of a conversation or to respect in any way or to validate rather in any way. So what is the difference between you bringing some debating Charlie Kirk? Are, are you and I validating Charlie Kirk and his beliefs or that he's a legitimate political figure by engaging with him in debate? Some people think so. You know, Some people think so. It's funny you bring that up because there was an instance in my conversation with him that I thought kind of spoke to the principle you were talking about, about showing them up or brain cucking them or whatever term you used. Uh, we were, he was talking about, sure you might even brain cucking. He, he, was, brain he was talking cucking. about the pharmaceutical industries and how they're bad, Fauci, ouchie, whatever, God, you know. And then I, I said, you know, you can't pull that crap with me. I want to, um, I want to nationalize these industries. You can't, like, this doesn't work with me. Will you nationalize them? And he dropped the subject, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like a, a very workable example of what you're saying is, is good to do. Mm -hmm. um, you, you talk about differences, right? In, in this particular, and I'll do the Godwin's Law a bit one more time, okay? I swear, just one, you know, is a treat, and I'm dropping it forever. Um, I, I, I read up a lot on the whole Nazis, fall of the Weimar, whatever. There was a strong intellectual weakness on the part of the uh, Stalin-backed communists in uh, Germany at the time. The attitude was, uh, around a lot of them, a very um, a, a tendency to underestimate the Nazis. The idea that this was just like another upsurge of conservatism, a populist conservatism that could be used by them. And they ended up actually being supportive of some of the institutional destruction that was done by the Nazis as they slowly like undid German democracy because they felt that it was a sort of a, an, a dismantling of um, bourgeois democracy. I am very, 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 um, um, what's the term? Vigilant, I guess, of tendencies that I see in line with that. Um, you know, obviously I'm not perfect in what I see is, you know, like leans into that. I could be wrong in my assessment. I feel confident on this one, but I do have a particular like fucking, uh, oh, can I say that here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. What, okay I, I was so good this entire time. I have a, I have a thing with that specific subject. Um, and I do think a lot of lefties really underestimated, you know, this, it was like the, the, the Bernie or bust discourse too, with Biden and Trump. And so many lefties were like, yeah, Trump and Biden are two sides of the same coin. They don't understand. A lot of them just don't understand. 
bourgeois democracy may be a killer, but it is infinitely better than what we could be living under. And I think that leftism can only really even have a chance at making its arguments if we exist in a system that's not openly persecuting us in the way that the MAGA crowd probably would the first chance they got. I mean, God, can you imagine if Barr had started putting out insurrection charges and all the BLM protesters? It would have been over for democracy in this country. Thank God he got ousted when he did. So that's a bugbear for me. But it's not born of insensitivity. I don't really know exactly what he means with that last statement, but whatever. Or bad faith tendencies on my part. These are sincere things I care about. Well, also, somebody just said Vosh needs a new chair. You're right. Vosh's chair is ripped up. It's the cat, isn't it? It's on to me. So I understand your argument. Yours, it's the mainstream argument. It's the mainstream democratic liberal argument. It is, in fact, the vote blue no matter who argument, right? It absolutely is. Based. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I don't. But, based. But, but, I don't endorse everything Vosh is saying, but like based on vote blue no matter who. Wait a minute. I, I, I honestly don't feel like you understand my argument with respect that was part one okay i don't need to watch it anymore well, that's enough of that